Okay. We apologize uh, for the wait. You know, we didn't want anyone to come and have missed part of this uh, very yeah, important so. item on the agenda. So um, this is, is actually a continuation um, of the previous meetings, uh, but I would invite um, this uh, Bill Gillen or a representative from the architect room? Or would you I'll just introduce if I may. Okay, because you're, oh, that would be great, because your name's not on the agenda. Okay. It's okay. So, so, yeah. Neither was the time. Yeah. <laughs> so. For the record, I'm Jim Lesko. I'm the executive director of Amherst Media. It's good to see you all again. Thank you for having us back. Throughout this process, Amherst Media has listened to this commission and to the planning board for their feedback and suggestions. Since the very first public meeting, which was this past March, we have also heard the complaints and support from area residents. We are especially appreciative of the hard work undertaken by the Gillen Collaborative Architects in trying to accommodate those valid suggestions and concerns into a workable plan for all. That is what has made this a truly remarkable community effort. While we will defend everyone's right to voice their opinions, that does not mean their opinions are always right. What you have seen in this submitted rendition is the design for a facility that will allow Amherst Media to continue our business, the business of providing independent local media for and by the greater Amherst community. With your support tonight, our relocation can meet all of the criteria of the needs we established when we began this long journey. The criteria is as follows. Closer to downtown, on the bus route, nearer to the middle and high schools, enabling us to expand our after school programming, and through ownership of our ability to create a permanent destination for all who see history, civic dialogue, government transparency, freedom of speech, and the arts as vital necessities if Amherst is to be a community of and for diversity through its actions as well as its rhetoric. The facility's design and plan, which will be presented by Bill Gillen, is in keeping with the nature and character of the district by paying homage to both the residential and commercial aspects we all currently find on Main and Gray Streets. We ask that you review this proposal with the balance of past and future history and see the future as one that includes Amherst Media new facility in the local historic district. Thank you, and now the presentation. Okay. We're back. Sean Krifka, myself, and Harold Lindsay over there. We're the team okay. Thank you. called Collaborative Architect. Yeah. And the commission did do a site visit, and as you know, last week we all made a visit Yes. to the site and we appreciated your staking it out so we i did too i was uh had the flu that day one day Glad flu, you're better and i thought i wouldn't be here but that and bill just a quick comment there's the, the microphone right there the handheld if, if people have trouble hearing um you speak into it if not okay um let's go over the uh, basic design in case you forgot This Main Street and Gray Street. These are offices. This is a studio and computer rooms in here. In between is a spacious lobby where the public is greeted and there'll be a, you know, outreach groups will come. There'll be uh, demonstrations in that or, or uh, information in that room to be shown. Thanks. So that's the, the building. It's a one-story building. There's an attic over it here and here, uh, which will contain storage and the mechanical equipment. There's no basement. It's a wet site. Um, we have to provide 14 cars per the zoning bylaw, and that's how many cars uh, we have. We have an area right here with, with a picket fence <coughs> in front of it that's concealing an area where there's the uh, condensers and the gas uh, propane tank. There's a retaining wall along here which separates this grade which is essentially flat from the early grade over here. We, we meet that grade with a, a new slope and that slope is is this much one foot and three feet. It's a, not 
a uh, steep take. It's generally thought to be a shallow pitch. What do you mean one, one foot and three feet? One foot horizontally and, no, three feet horizontally, one foot rise. So I when I show the slope, I see. it's like I see. that. I see. It was alluded to at the previous meeting that I summed that it was a steep, right. possibly dangerous slope. And that does not add up, really. Right. That is a half a foot. Uh, we have uh, we have a, a, a ramp. Where we have a sidewalk here and a parking lot here. It's all on the same grade, so there's no need for any uh, handicap uh, access ramps involved or highly uh, accessible. Over here the grade goes up and meets existing grades coming down and conceals a tank that's buried under the ground to take care of storm water. There's no change in the height between here and the building that's about 20 feet and the, and the mansion up above. And from here to here, there's a rise of about four feet in that 20 feet. So it, it's a gentle plateau right there, and then it's regraded gently down all around. So I, I think the design is a win-win-win. Uh, Amherst Media has a visible and highly respectable location and building in the center of town. 400 Main Street. The view state, the viewscape of Hills House, is saved. That's show you perhaps better on the on the model. If the the Hills House and its viewscape and the building proposed is a modest building that fits in with this neighborhood. I don't think it's a place for a dramatic architectural masterpiece of any sort to be done because it would detract from the from the historic buildings up above much as much as we would prefer to have a space we could show our uh, ingenuity gray street is helped because it has the missing tooth and the ending the street in a building that is fits in in size, shape, and materials as the other building on Gray Street. Uh, the, the roof of this building has been reduced from our previous uh, submission of 32 feet. It's down to 26 feet above grade here. Uh, we did that in part by uh, uh, reducing the pitch from an 8 and 12 pitch to a 7 and 12 pitch. Could you say that once again, please? This is a 7 and 12 pitch on this roof rather than an 8 and 12 pitch. And that helped us get the loop roof. So does that make down. it the same height as 14 Gray Street? It's a little higher. This building is, is lower than almost every building on, on the site. It's, it's not a <coughs> tall building in, in respect to the others. 26 feet from here. These buildings are higher than that, but they are two-story buildings. We're only story and a half, as they said. It means it's a story plus an attic. The parking lot, which I think is a really critical thing as far as the viewscape is concerned, the parking lot is hidden behind the building so that you don't see it coming along Main Street. Uh, we took that, the viewscape and the parking as a critical piece of design criteria and put a building here that would not harm the viewscape and would fit into the rest of Main Street. Our, our intent was not to make a fancy building. Well, I think, uh, I think that's all I have to say. Thank you. I think um, just because we sort of mm -hmm. used, so another change from the last meeting is that you did recess that. Yes. Yeah. The last presentation had the building out here. At the time I was, the time I was thinking, 
that this was supposed to become a commercial district like over here. So I was thinking, oh, it's good to put the building up close to the sidewalk. That's what the planner's intent was. But I found out differently that really, uh, the, that we really should respect the residential piece over here and maybe this shouldn't, this side of the street shouldn't become uh, a bunch of shops or, or buildings which are up against the limit, up against the property line. So we pushed this back, we got it back to 25 feet uh, set back. We think that's, uh, you know, that's, for us, it's perfect. <clears throat> thank you. Um, thank you very much for that uh, uh, excellent presentation. So, um, I, we're going to, well, we're still going to have this portion for the commissioners to ask any questions that um, I'm sure they may have of the property owner or probably the architects. Um, and we're going to do something a little different at this meeting. Um, the commissioners, we have never had a chance to really have a free-flowing discussion amongst ourselves because we've um, most of the meeting has been dedicated, the meetings up until now, to public comment. And we can't, we can only meet in public at, you know, set meetings. So for this meeting, we may not get to public comment because after we ask the questions of the architect, we'll keep it as an open meeting, but we want to be able to have a conversation amongst ourselves, which we really, you'll all be here, that we've really never been able to, to, to do before. Open meeting. Yeah, yeah. open, right, because we've, yes. uh, we've always run out of time with public comment. And Jennifer, it's probably worth noting that uh, this is a seven-person commission, and three of us uh, are joining the commission for the first time. So the very first uh, application that three out of seven of us are dealing with is this so we don't we don't know each other we don't even know each other as a commission and the only place we can get to know each other is right here so even when we make the site visit we can't talk to each other about what we're seeing we, we cannot have any conversation that the public is not you know privy to I mean not that we would want to have it but we just have never had the opportunity to really have a free flowing uh, conversation but um so and the meeting, you know, will will be open. We might go into closed session. Um, well, I mean, hey, we keep the hearing open, open, or you know, we can see how many questions and comments we get, and maybe take public comment. But right. I think it's good. Like Jeff, I think it's important for the commission to have a discussion amongst members. We haven't had. Oh, I I forgot to. If you want to go through the slides and see the perspective, that you could do that whenever you think. Can we go ahead now? Um. Oh. Would you like to? Because we were just at the site. Do you think that does that bring anything more than? I what think we you should take a site? look at them and well, then okay, if you then think so, a quick do. review. Yeah. Yes. Okay. okay. Otherwise, we would have spent a couple of weeks drawing them and. No. No. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah. Does Nate? You have yeah, I can, okay. I can control it. If someone wants to. Um, talking to them. Tell me what's next if you want to do that. Oh, well, there's got to be something next. Yeah, there you go. Anyone? There are the, uh, the offices, the studio. This is the way the building uh, looks from the parking lot side, the other side of the building, from Main Street. Uh, this is the way it looks from Main Street. Yeah, all right. So that, that shows now the setback, that, that other one showed the setback in. Yes. Okay, and this shows the flat. Yeah, there's a setback. Here's the, here's the setback. So is that atrium come a little forward from the west wing? No, it has. It just has a little oh, roof. Oh, it's just the uh, roof. Okay. So that you don't. Right. Yep. But it's at the 25 foot setback as well. Uh, this is the 25 foot setback. Yes. Yes. Oh. It is. Okay. This shows the grading through the building. This is Main Street here, and we're coming along and come to the adjoining property like that. This is the little picket fence. And this is the uh, the building. It's the, the section is through the east wing. Yeah, which was the east wing. wing. Right. Adjacent to Gray Street, looking west. Right. Right. So that's a question. 
that was here looking that way. Yeah. yeah. So I think we've already said that the, le the level of detail will lead to the future. We're doing the big picture right now. You did mention the little picket fence, and so I was trying to imagine the stone structure that we just approved being moved back, and then a little picket fence running parallel to that. Perpendicular to it. Perpendicular. Perpendicular to that. Okay. All right. We did submit a. Uh, outline specification which gives you more than you want to know about what the materials are. Well then reason I ask is it's so attractive that way I wanted to see how yeah. you were going to connect with it. That's oh good, yeah. Okay. Wait a minute, can you point to where this is on that thing? That's this way, looking like, looking like that, cutting right through this building. Okay, okay. Ready for the next one? And yeah. uh, where is this one, John? Further along. That is cutting through the lobby. Okay, this way. Yeah. And that's looking same direction. Same west. Looking uh, west. So you can see the heavy outline is the area of the lobby. Inside, there's a canopy for that roof outside, and you're looking at the west wing beyond here. Mm -hmm. And this one. the outline, it was supposed to, there's an outline that doesn't show up in, in the PDF as an outline, but this is the, uh, this is the east wing in front, you know, that you don't see when you look at the west. Behind you. Yeah. Too many lines. No, <laughs> Do it. And that's a section through the same lobby, but looking in the opposite direction. Looking uh, to the east, Bill, the east wing is the smaller one there, and the west wing was supposed to be an outline that is beyond. That's so that kind of it always gives you the sense of all the elements, even though the section when you look at the view, it doesn't capture it all because you're looking one direction or the other. Just look at the bold line, that's the key. <laughs> Plus the next one. This is a section looking. Why don't you show it on there? Yeah. Through the west wing, looking to the south. Oh, I'm sorry, sorry. Through the west wing. No. This is through the east wing. This is through the east wing looking south. Okay, so here is uh, the entry, and here is the facade that you would see. If you cut a section through here, you just see the emptiness of the uh, of the wing. Okay. That's what that heavy line is. Cut a section through it. And this is the one that's through the west wing looking to the south. Uh, so the if you were standing the north? Yeah, this is the west wing. North and north end. Looking west wing. Okay, towards yeah. the south. Yeah. So if you were standing here in the parking lot, that's right. what you would see. Which is basically the staff entry and the uh, entry for vehicle, the From vehicular the entry, uh, as From opposed the to the entry lot. on Main Street. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then there's uh, all the specifications. Very easy to read that way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's any other plan other than no. Right. Okay. The lobby, the lobby is how many square feet? The lobby. The I think 500, but as we saw in the site visit, it's only about nine feet in depth. <laughs> so that it accommodates two entry doors, one from each side. It accommodates the reception desk, and it accommodates. You know, it's longer, obviously, in the other direction, but if we went back to the plan, here you can see it here. So, so. Okay. Yeah. 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 And how long I'm sorry, it's not nine feet, it's, it's double that. It's about 18 feet. But in the field, it looks very shallow. And it comes, this is the whole lobby area. And this is a closet, it goes back to reception here. And then it widens out because 
There's people handling equipment in and out through this, this uh, room here. And there's the conference room that's going to handle a number of people. And then the corridor gets a little narrow as you go to the, to the uh, studio <coughs> functions where yes. the staff will always be. You would have had a question. Yes, um, well, it's, it, it's a question that doesn't come up here. But uh, as I think about the project, the berm is also a new structure. And I'm trying to visualize the berm as I was, I've gone there several times to try to visualize it. <coughs> this picture that we have is somewhat helpful. And what it shows us is that the sight lines from the sidewalk over the berm cut off uh, the lower part of the Hills House so that the porch and the, you know, all, uh, in any event. Not, uh, not really, you know. It, it, well, it well, intersects I, the hillside about two thirds of the way up. I would love to be able to see how the berm is working in relation to the sight lines. Here it is. Here it is. If you okay. want to get down and look, you can kind of see right yes, up there. Yes, if I were thumbling, I could do that. From here to here. This so slope from here to here. Here. For it. We can move the model for you. The picture, this slope from here to here, is like tabletop to the back wall. To the back wall. Oh. Out. Um, that, so that's how it's going very gradual. Yes. It's going yes. very gradual. Yeah. Okay. It looks worse there. <coughs> yeah. Okay. Now, if, I'm not saying this would be done, but there was, it, if the lobby was a little narrower, is it possible this could go a little more, the whole uh, west wall could be a little more to the east? Would that, I mean, I, I, I totally see that you're, this is, the western wall is still to the east of the Hills House. Mm -hmm. But if there was any concern, I mean, if the lobby was a little narrower, is We it couldn't possible? make our program. We couldn't we, do that. We, we really, after the, the last three or four times we've been, we've uh, been cutting and cutting and lowering the building, and uh, we were at, it's a dense snowball at this point. Have you been forwarded the program that allocates all the spaces they need? Yeah, no, I understand all the square yeah. footage. Yeah. As I said, the building has never gotten smaller than 4,400 square feet since the very first presentation right. by the applicant. It's always been that footprint. That's what the program is. Uh, so to make it smaller, you either go a second story, what do you do? Right. No, we didn't know if, I was just no, wondering no. if since it was just the lobby, if the lobby, but I don't know. Yeah, no, it's it's to, yeah. not just the lobby, it's really the, it's main, not just the lobby, right? Uh, outreach to the public. Right, it's more than just an right. entryway. It's mm -hmm. important, it's the outreach. Of the no, no, we, I mean, I yeah, appreciate you condense the snowball. Yeah. Can I just interrupt for yeah. one second? I'm sorry, what's, what's your first name? My name is Maureen. Maureen, there were some photographs that we took today when the model was completed. And one of them in particular kind of gives you a scale of the berm. We we'll put the looking, camera's eye down as close as the horizon east. would let us get to the ground. That's you know, and that's sort get. of the pitch. You know, if you're standing further down Main, Main Street, maybe at yeah. uh, Dickinson Street, looking to the east. Yeah, four of those to the commission. I mean, I will say that I find the model helpful in terms of general massing, but in terms of a perspective or bird's eye view, it's very difficult because it's so rough. So I think, you know, the questions about the berm aren't really answered both in the photographs that have been mocked up from the site visit or the model. I think it's very difficult to understand how a four and a half foot high hill, new berm, you know, it's four and a half feet high above existing grade will impact the view. So to me, this model, shows roughly what it will look like, but it doesn't really tell you when you're walking up Main Street what it will look like. I get it, it's, you're saying it's a uniform gradual slope, but when we're on the site visit, you know, I took this picture from the sidewalk and then I draw a line where the string was, and that's what it looks like when it's take, I'm taking a picture from about five feet, six feet, inches. And so from, if so, you know, if you're five and a half feet, at this height you look, it looks like that's the top of the hill down now. So, you know, from the sidewalk, there's gonna be a slope all the way up to this height. So, you know, it's hard to see on the model. It's hard to really tell in this picture as well. So I think it's a difficult thing to understand. I'll say two things. In scale in that picture, that white line is probably a foot and a half thick. 
So the string was only very thin. The string is probably at the bottom of your white line. That's the first thing. The second thing is I've heard various heights declared. Someone said the berm was five feet. We said the berm was four feet. You said the berm was four and a half feet. Doesn't that not make somewhat of a difference? I mean, there's a certain exaggeration here that's leading people in the wrong direction, I think. So when we photograph the model, as we've done, it gives you a much better idea. That's, that's why we did it. I, I personally, I, I'm going to say that the model is very hard. These pictures are taken, at, again, out of perspective that's very difficult to read. So I, I think if the commission still has questions with it, you know, Bruce had asked for a, a computer-generated model a while ago. You know, could that aid in the commission's review of this project? I think this cardboard cutout is very hard to get a sense for a perspective. It's, you know, I guess I think it's helpful to see massing in general, but to then understand the actual perspective of being on Main Street looking up the hill or vice versa, I think it's very difficult from that model or from the mock-up images. I'm, you know, I'm saying it's difficult if you're not, if you don't have a, you know, a more accurate representation of topography and building. So I, you know, I, you know, I'm not sure what the answer is, but if the commission still has questions about the berm, I think we need to understand how, what's a good way to, to clarify those. Yeah. Um, I'd like to try and change the conversation. Oh, I want to. <coughs> Are there any? Um, I mean, uh, basically, I, I would like to push for a different approach. Um, you know, I appreciate you folks have done a lot here and you've responded uh, to the comments and so forth. The trouble is that there was a comment that we made in March that you haven't responded to, and I think that would have been a better route to... So I'm going to read something because I took the trouble to write it out because I didn't want to ramble on forever. And I've edited it down to four paragraphs. So I might have to explain some of this. But my considered view is the route to appropriateness on this project um, does not run through creating a contextual reflection. In other words, a building that looks like the buildings around. I don't think that's the route to the most satisfactory solution here. I think the, the route to a more satisfactory solution um, is creating what well, I would call the smallest volumetric presence. And that basically means not having the gable roof, but having a flat roof, reducing the massing of this building significantly. This goes against what we as a commission uh, might conventionally think is the route to appropriateness. We're, used, we're a historic commission, and the sense is that we should uh, create something that's in, in historical context. Um, and that's the general rule, I think, for judging appropriateness. But this go-to instinct um, in, in, in this place, a building that's in a location surrounded by Victorian architecture, um, uh, that, it should, that that approach to appropriateness is where you are leading us. And that's not unreasonable, and it might actually be the best route. Um, but it feels wrong to me in a project in this location for a parcel in close visual proximity to four grand and grandly situated Victorian mansions, it seems to me that placing another similarly scaled building deferring to Victorian form and detail isn't going to work, especially when it's placed so close to Main Street. Um, the building is 4,500-ish uh, square feet. That's pretty big. Um, and some of these uh, that was very helpful, John, when you put those, uh, there's a couple more down there. I simply took photographs and, and, and uh, linked the lines uh, to the poles that you had. And the people standing there, because it was a site visit, actually uh, helpful too in the sense that they provide scale. It's a good job, but I don't think in this case that the Victorian-esque uh, form, particularly with the pitched roofs and so forth, is the best route. Um, rather, it seems to me, uh, that for a building of this size and proximity to the street, something simple, elegant, with a low-profile roof plane, flat roof plane, would be appropriate, would be more appropriate, um, essentially echoing the buildings across the street if we need to echo something. 
Um, I, uh, I note that in March of this year, we've already given, uh, we gave you four, well, we didn't give you because you weren't there, but we gave uh, the applicant four guidelines to pursue uh, to, toward a positive outcome. And you've chased only three of those four, uh, leaving the third of the four, which suggested that uh, you explore the significance of the site situated between a row of low-rise urban buildings on the south side of Main Street and the grand houses to the north and west. That was unexplored, and I think that that oversight is sadly critical because I think now, now that we've had time, all of us have had time to think about this, that that's the best way to achieve a satisfactory result. So, uh, as we are advised by town council, and I think this is somewhat egregious, that in order to formally move forward, we have to deny a current application and then make, as we've done once before, some suggestions about how it, a successful application might be achieved. Um, a far better way would be to, as any sensible design process proceeds, you have to, you explore design options. The loyally way of having to say no and then keep people throwing applications on the table until something sticks is kind of absurd to me, and I hope we really have to do that. But if, uh, if we are to exert our influence, or at least our authority here, that's what we have to do. We could exert our influence and um, uh, table this and ask you to explore what a flat roof, uh, uh, actually explore our third option on our March uh, uh, list and see whether we don't achieve a better and more satisfactory outcome. And if we didn't, then we would pursue this, probably adopting it, or we would adopt um, what I think would be a better uh, route to success. I would like to push us in that direction. I think ultimately that would be a better solution. I'm particularly informed by when I drew the drawings that showed the mass right at the street. Um, it just seemed to me that exercising your design skills to create a, a more elegant, simple, modern-esque looking building, if you like, because there would be uh, a limited amount uh, showing, would be, would be a better um, a better route. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to the, I'm not going to thread myself pretty it uh, yeah. in front of Prostrate the bulldozer yourself, yes, right. I just think it's, it's likely to be a better outcome. And I'm, I'm going to do what I can to convince my colleagues um, to uh, encourage you to pursue that uh, line of uh, that design option. Probably should stop there. Okay. So I'm just going to respond. You know, get this as, I, our, I'm, as our free flowing as discussion. I say, my conversation I with, is with the five the of you, right? right? Yeah. To right. see whether I can convince you to agree with me, because if I can't, then we're we're probably done here. I think what. Um, and by the way, I don't think this is tragic. I I just think we can do better. What I what. I would agree. I mean, I think what we're, what I'm struggling with is, I, um, you know, the the applicant did, you know, has went back to the drawing board and came up with something that is light years um, more appropriate to the setting than the initial application. But I, I, what I, you know, I. I connect with what you're saying in that, and I'm just going to say it, I think what we're struggling with is that anything that goes there kind of takes away from the majestic streetscape that's there. And we don't want our legacy to be that something looked less attractive because of what we did. At the same time, Amherst Media, you know, purchased the property owner has, you know, right to build there. So we have to agree on all of us together, you know, what takes away least from the whole sweeping green hillside that's there now. And we're feeling like we're barring it a bit. 
Yeah. I, I feel that you listened really a lot to uh, the recommendations and that you adapted it quite a bit. And it's, as you said, Bill, it's a modest building in a place where there are really spectacular buildings in a space that when you stand there, you look at this, and it's not bad, but I feel that the emphasis was on trying to make it the least harmful to this spectacular site. That was really what you're trying to do. You're trying to to come to terms with what Amherst Media needs and deserves and not hurt this site. And that's, that's I know you're looking at it all the time. You have that sensitivity. And when I stood there with my siblings who all came from all over the country and explained what we were doing, we were looking at this, we say, it's not bad, but it's better without it. It hasn't enhanced to me the feeling of the site. I'm not sure if that's possible in a way because it is so spectacular. And we're not just talking about this site and the view. We're talking about the fact that we've got the Emily Dickinson house, which we put so much effort on, the other houses. It's a context. People come here. It's what makes Amherst really breathtakingly special. That And, and people want to linger there. They want to walk there. We don't want it to be a drive-through place. We want people to really breathe out and take in all these things. And so I think you've done a wonderful job, but it's not spectacular. So can there be a spectacular thing? Can something with a flat roof make it less you say spectacular? And not that it's grand, in that, not that, that it's grand, but that it somehow blends in. Yeah, that you have. I'm not sure. That's it's something well, that I question. It's, uh, it's a route to a less uh, impactful building. In, in this case, I think appropriate is less impactful. That's my point. Yes. Um, it's not. It's not pursuing creating a building of similar historic uh, appearance to fit in. Which is I think impossible. this is an unusual situation. I think, and, and, and this will be a learning experience for us. I hope as a as a commission that not. That you know, you have rules of thumb and golden rules, which are, which you follow um, until you don't. There's the, the it's, it's the it's the exception that proves the rule, and I think the exception here that will prove the rule. There's an appropriateness in this case, is the route to appropriateness is different from almost every other thing we've ever done, and and that's what I'm encouraging us as a commission to try and wrap our heads around. Is it reasonable? that we can imagine that we can put, we can give a certificate of appropriateness to something that is, it, it, it pursues a completely different logic to what we've come to expect, except as being the rule of thumb, the way to go here. And I think by, because of the, um, the, the unusual, spectacular in this town, I guess you could say, um, situation that we have here that um, diminishing the impact, diminishing the volume, making it smaller, um, not following uh, the, uh, the the rule of matching it to the context of surrounding buildings, but following the rule of making it as small and as, 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 uh, as uh, um, diminutive as possible is the route, is the best route, is the route to appropriateness. So I'm just reminding ourselves and people who are listening to us that we have had no opportunity to discuss this amongst ourselves. That it's the nature of open meeting law that we are not allowed to discuss our views with each other without being listened to by the public who are invested in the decision. I need to note that again because we are not in agreement. One of us has a very particular view. Others of us have other views. We have had zero opportunity to talk with each other because we've been listening to the applicants and to various urgencies on both sides of a very contested issue 
because I think it's wonderful for Amherst Media and a great pity for Amherst Media that this is such a public, visual, visible, special place protected by local historic district regulations that people have such different views about. So this makes it, this is precisely why Bruce raises to us another notion of appropriate. Now I want to speak somewhat against well, that's because we're talking to yeah. I want to know what you are. I, 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 yes, I'm I, behaving yes, as though yes, so none of you is here. Okay. I don't care. So I let me talk to now. Mm -hmm. I want to know what you yes, all yes. think. That's you will if you give me a moment. I will. I just <laughs> want to focus the discussion. Okay. Please. So I notice uh, there's several things I've been very painfully aware of with this because I keep going back to the site <laughs> to think about it. And uh, let me just say that the berm is going to be a whole other issue. I don't want to get to the berm yet. We're just talking about the building, okay? The building has two different appropriate contexts. One is Gray Street, the other is Main Street. And we did talk about this with the applicant and both objectors and supporters at an earlier meeting. And I know that I urged the Gray Street view and not the pizza parlor, uh, sauna tub, whatever it is, view. That, that is not my goal for Main Street. I think it's also true that the building faces both sides. And I like, personally, what's been done with the Gray Street side. I agree. I okay. think they've really nailed it on that. Okay. I'm good with that. But the problem is with the Main Street side. Now, I'm very pleased that it's been moved back. Because it's side, aside from, I mean, the- That the West Wing the west, the west, Yes, the West Wing has been staggered uh, because when you go up and down Main Street, if you're looking to the north, think UMass North Amherst College South, okay? That's the way to kind of think about this. Uh, that the, the buildings to the north are all set back. Everything up and down Main Street is set back. Pizza and um, um, Hot Tub and one other building are really right up on the right. sidewalk. The sidewalk's wider. I'm the sidewalk right. is wider and everything else is set back. So I am not in any way suggesting a Main Street south side view for Main Street. What I am looking at is as part of our purpose is not only the maintenance and improvement of the setting, but the encouragement of new building designs compatible with the existing architecture. Would more glass be better? Would something else that had a more of a modern look to it? I, I'm not an architect, but I do feel still a, a, a bit disappointed with the main, although I like the entry. I think the entry is a good idea. The setback is a good idea. So alas, although I agree with my colleague on many issues, I don't on this one. And I'm very glad with what you've done with the Gray Street look. And I'm, I'm just at sixes and sevens about the Gray Street look on Main Street. Because indeed, a lot of the other businesses along Main Street are adapted old houses with, uh, with, uh, with the same roof well, lines. Like the Spanish yes. The street. Yes. That he brought, yeah, it's a house. Yes, yes, and you go down Main Street and they're all old houses with Peak roofs. I personally like uh, Bruce's idea that one should explore this. This building is a compromise. You're trying to do the, the, the side. You're trying to fit in with so many things. I, I know you've done a wonderful, amazing job with that. But it remains a compromise. You're trying to do everything and really not hurt the site. And what Bruce is saying is, can you? And is it possible to enhance the site by something completely new? That's, that's what he's trying to explore. That you 
want to bring you some help. Um, yeah, but I'm not asking him, I'm asking you. Yeah. Uh, is it your view? Yes. And do you want the Gray view? Street side also to be checked? Yes, in that case, I would. I would say this. Okay. So he's he's right. said he, his suggestion or his vision was to kind of reduce the volume of that drink. Right. What drinks? To have a sleek, elegant, super modern, contemporary, or, or whatever or just thing, perhaps. That it blends in with the hillside and this. That minimizes it, but that's I mean, somehow elegant. You could elegant cover the whole the thing with uh, vegetation. You can build walls that you can grow vegetation. You could make this thing disappear into the landscape. There's lots of ways of doing it. I wasn't getting into that. I was talking about the volumetric presence and the general approach to, right. uh, which is, uh, uh, let's say, um, the appropriateness would be to link it to the landscape, to the form, to the, to the topography, right. not to the buildings around it, I guess. And Something to have like it that. lend itself as a place where people like to linger and sit on benches and sort of um, park like Maybe. Uh, but That's maybe pie yeah. in the sky <laughs> things. But we, get, we haven't had a chance to talk, so we're throwing out pie in the sky things, too. So we need and to hear from Jim. Right, and, and then we do and need to tie you. it back. To, what to the criteria, the yes. That's true. Within the regulation. Yes. So do you? Yeah, I'll start with you and we'll go down the line. I can see a little bit of what both, there's almost like two and possibly a third side being brought up here. And I can see the benefits of a little bit of each one. Uh, I, I personally feel, but I'm not committed to this, and I think I might eventually be influenced by others on the committee, that the plan before us is one that does fit architecturally and real estate wise, many of the other properties in that general vicinity. I think there is a feeling that we wish that never were zoned business. And town meeting in its perhaps a little bit of un lack of wisdom made that business, because that's they, the They only weren't aware of the local historic district dimensions. Pardon? They were not aware, made, made aware of the local historic district implications. No, but they should have been cognizant of the fact of what business zoning means and that, that it would allow a variety of, you know, businesses to be there. Um, this as a design, and I think uh, Bill Gillen and his associates have done some really good work in making something that would fit on that lot and also balance the needs of, of the owner. Um, I, I'm a little shocked when we went out there and uh, did the site visit for the burn that's to the west side of the house that does seem to come up a ways and maybe block a view a little bit of a car coming along of, of one or the two the hills house which is the first one that we see uh, coming from the east uh, but I think with that lot there, there's compromises that have to be made and I know they do have a wet lot. I own one of the buildings that's across the street for a while. Um, it, it, on the other side of the street. And I am looking forward to being able to be influenced one way or another, but <coughs> my current thinking is not uh, uh, that it needs uh, something really particularly unique there because I think as, as Bill Gillen brought up, if it were really a unique structure, it would take away a little bit from the other houses as well as seeing the Hills House and the uh, uh, League of Women Voters House too. So I, uh, I'll uh, wait and look forward to getting a chance to be influenced by them. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> Peggy. Oh, it's very hard, <coughs> very, very hard to even comment. I, I, I'm new to the commission. This is my third or fourth meeting, I think. Um, so, and 
suddenly being partly responsible for such a major town decision feels a little bit daunting to me. Um, I live right in the neighborhood. So I drive that street you know, hundreds of times a day, walking, whatever. And I would love it to stay open, but I, I know that things things change. I think that when when the, when the towns when the towns yes when the town sold that land was when this whole thing got set in motion and, and the, that there's no going back on that that might not have been such by some of our feelings might not have been the wisest of decisions but that that was made by town meeting in the olden days and then here we here we go um, and I have great respect for the work that the Amherst Media does and the role that it plays in in, in the community for all of us. I guess the, the best I can come up with would be the, the compromise would be if the building itself could be on that corner that that wouldn't interfere with, the, and I'm not sure that that's what I, that's the way it's cite, uh, cited. Is, is it completely open past the corner? Do you know what I mean when I say past the corner where, where the Gray Street house comes in? When you, if you're coming up the hill. When you're coming from here, yeah. this view is, let's face it, the open panoramic view that's here is gone. So mm -hmm. coming from here, it is an intrusion in, in that scape. It certainly is. Coming from here, I agree you've done, you know, you pushed it as far back as you possibly, you tried so hard to really reduce that impact. That's, and that's pretty amazing what you've come up with. Can it be done even more by making it a flat, minimal, elegant, functional structure uh, that doesn't echo anything? I don't think it would necessarily detract if it's minimizing that. That's that's the question that we're exploring, I think. Yeah. And, and the other thing I'm not, this doesn't reflect to me the, the Victorian nature of the houses in, in, the, in the neighborhood uh, fully enough. It, it, it looks, looks more, much more contemporary than that. And, and again, I'm not, a, I'm not a designer, and this is what's so problematic for me. I don't, I don't quite know how to, how to really weigh in having this be fairly, fairly new. I'm being very open. This is very new for me, and, and so it's very hard for me to, to come down on this or this and, and stay, stay with that. I keep going back and forth. The one thing that I would ask, the question, did the Amherst High School offer space for the, for the uh, media center at some point, is that still an option or is that, that, that there's no way, there's no other possible, are there other possible spaces that might not trigger this kind of controversy because the, the work is so important that you're doing and, and yeah. so valuable that, you know, how could, how could, is there a different way that we could be of support that wouldn't, wouldn't feel like it's, it's, it's a, uh, a roadblock yeah. that we're just in the, in the business of roadblock. It's I think that we can't, you know, we can just deal with the with we, application okay. that's, okay. that's yeah, before we're not, us. Yeah, we're not yeah. concerned with, you know, other, other options. Other options, so, yeah. Okay. yeah. I'll just say, so quickly, what Bruce alluded to, that, you know, the town staff had asked the town attorney, not town council as in the town council, <laughs> you know, how, how the commission can approach this project on, a, on an open site, on a historically significant landscape, and so, the re recommendation is to follow the bylaw on an application by application basis, and you know. So if the commission feels like there is a different route or different building, you know, we could ask the applicant to continue to keep this hearing open and move forward with a new building, you know, or say, okay, this is what's presented. We're going to make a decision on what's here and make our comments. The commission makes their comments to the criteria in the bylaw. So that's what they have to do anyways. But the idea would be that there's enough guiding uh, comments that the applicant knows what needs to happen to get something that could be approved. And so if, you know, Bruce thinks there's um, a different route, so, you know, the question would be, if the commission agrees that we want to have the applicant revise the plan again, we can ask that. If we think it satisfies the criteria now, 
we don't need to ask that. And so that's something, you know, the commission needs to decide. And so the criteria in the bylaw says for, you know, new or existing, new or additions to look at the scale, shape, and proportions, um, both in relationship to the building and the land area on which it sits. Look at the setback, the dimensional uh, issues, and everything in the vicinity. The criteria also then says, it shall consider, among other things, the historic and architectural value and significance of the site, the building or structure, general design, proportions, detailing, mass, arrangement, texture, and material, and the relationship of all the features. So, you know, this is all brand new building, so everything that's being proposed to similar buildings or other structures in the surrounding area. So, as a new building, you know, it's not just like you're putting on an addition to a house. So this whole thing is part of the review. It's the how the building is situated on the site, how the berm impacts the landscape, how the retaining wall and the parking lot all affect the site. So it's not just the building. I think we need to, you know, we have to look at all of it. And if, you know, my thought would be if the commission thinks there's another route, we would want to ask the applicant to explore that. If they're not going to explore that, then the option for my, and what I would see is you close the hearing and the commission can deliberate on and discuss how the current design does or doesn't meet the criteria. And so we can't keep asking is there another route. We, either, we have to look at what's been proposed and refined. So they've come back, this is the third time they've made changes. What, and what about this design right now does or doesn't meet the criteria? So is it, as Bruce is saying, the size of the, of the building? Is it the high roof? Is it location on the site you know is it um, the orient you know is it the arrangement of the massing to block the view I mean these are things the Commission um, you know needs to articulate and so I think the um, you know I think with more discussion I think we can talk about how it you know how it relates to these criteria so you know is it we said that the gray street side works and so you know Kind some, of some of us have. So some of us have. So <laughs> sure. So if we have, then you know, can we articulate articulate why that works? Is it the the size, the massing, the orientation? Is it you know? I think we just need to be. We need to look at the drawings and you know use more than just I think it works or it doesn't. Explain. Is it the pattern of the windows? Is it the height of the roof? Is it the size of the roof that doesn't work? Is it the setback from the street? I mean, those are things we but need I to... But I think some of what we're saying is it's not a little thing that some of us are saying that we think it's in scale, in every way, it works from Gray Street. Sure. Because the other houses on Gray Street are extremely charming and attractive, but they're not ornate. So this isn't less ornate. Um, but that... Great, I mean, Main Street is a totally different look and feel than, and since the entrance is on Main Street, it kind of anchors it on Main Street, so. And it's from Main Street that you have the vista that's cherished, too. You're not cherishing the vista from Gray Street of the Women's Club and Emily Dickinson. You're cherishing it from Main Street. That is the focus of the historical sort of context. That's really where tourists or we are going to be walking and cherishing this this landscape. Now we not doesn't. I mean, since I don't know if you want to say something, but it it doesn't. It's not in front of the Hills House, so that's it's why that right. But so I guess I'm trying to get a sense. You know, your drive once it's built. If, if it feels like it's a continuation of Gray Street, I don't know that that's going to be so joined to the eye. Or is it going to look like there was a little, there, there was a building plopped on the corner of Main Street, I, Okay, yeah, I, I could try again. Um, because we really do differ, and I think we're going to have to either figure this out yeah. or take a vote. Uh, as I drive in from the east, I see Gray Street and I really admire what's been done with Gray Street. I agree. And I see the eastern building as fitting that design. So I... The eastern... I mean, this... this yeah, I, I, I think you're okay. persuasive. Okay, well... So the eastern maps, right? I, I'm, I'm just... My own point of view, I see that as fitting that design. 
I like what's been done with the lobby. I like it's being set back. I like it's glass. I like the entrance into it. The western wing is a real aesthetic difficulty because it isn't great. You on that. It isn't Gray Street, yeah, like it. so you can't do that. Uh, I wouldn't, with all due respect to my other colleague who owns property on Grace, on Main Street, I wouldn't want to emulate the buildings on the north side. The former owner. Well, in any event. Yeah. Yes, I, I would not want to emulate what was on the north side of Main Street. And I think it's impossible to even try to echo the Grand Victorian House. Oh, it is. I wouldn't even try that. Right. Which is why you were suggesting. So for me, the artistic, historic significance, do no harm, intention. Modest, unassuming. Well, that's not built into the regulations. I'm trying to say what's built into the regulations. What's built into the regulations poses a very real problem for the Western, and another very real problem for the berm. So for me, that's where the problems are. So, um, I'm very happy with uh, Gray Street side and the lobby, yeah. although I would say, the only thing I would say, and I think Bill has already convinced me otherwise, if the lobby weren't quite so lavish, could everything be moved down a bit and could the berm be moved down too? That was just what I was hoping for. So, okay, I've said that. Well, it um, doesn't appear to be too lavish to me, but that's yeah. so, but yeah. that's a small thing that we don't have to deal with. But I, I heard what you said earlier, Maureen, uh, Maureen about the, uh, uh, and I wasn't trying to soften you up, but that was never made. I probably should have thought of that. Um, so it's something into your, it. Your, your observation about the value of the corner uh, uh, massing on Gray Street and what it does and so forth, um, it feels um, like a, a good thing. I can I can I can get behind that now because what I mean it, you may have thought that what I'm suggesting is a wholesale you know redesign and so forth, but it's not really. I mean it's simply the roof form that I'm talking about. Everything else is uh, the location, how it's been uh, the plan shape has been developed, and, and, and relation you know the proximity to Main Street and all of that. All of that seems fine. So Marianne. Um, what we could perhaps ask of the applicant um, would be to treat the western um, block differently from the eastern block. Well, we have to make sure that we don't ask the applicant to do something and then say, gee, we don't like it, would you go do well, something else? Well, yes, that's true. We, well, no, hold on. We, we, we certainly want to try and move the, the ball forward in an orderly um, way. Um, uh, but. Uh, and, and from my point of view, I'm probably able to, of course, because I've been trained to do it, imagine what uh, could happen easier than the rest of you. Uh, you would probably be more reliant on the drawing produced to fully absorb the conversation. And that's to be expected and so forth. But I'm, I'm thinking if we have these drawings in front of us, if we were to, um, if we were to flatten the roof of the western volume, um, and in terms of a, a design concept, just an approach or an idea to treat them differently, uh, to pursue the line of thinking that I was advocating, or I am advocating, um, but solely with the Western volume and not with the Eastern volume, because you persuaded me that there is a logic and an intelligence and a, and a sense of appropriateness, which is the key word, of course, here, about this uh, Eastern volume. Now I know because I've been listening to your program. I think that that roof has um, two different uh, important functioning, different ceiling heights. So if we were talking about flattening that roof, it would be it would have a, a wedding cake effect on it. And the wedding cake, I think, if I look at the plan, is further to the north, which is good. So it's not uh, you know it's stacking up the slope to some degree. So it feels that that might actually. Uh, uh, be a satisfactory uh, formal solution, um, but I would um, 
ask whether I could persuade you to imagine that that might be more appropriate um, in the sense of the word, that, in the sense of the use of the word appropriate that we have here, more appropriate than the current massing. If we were to um, flatten the roof of the western, uh, does that does that appeal to uh, us I, as a commission? No, it, 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 I wish it did. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm just exploring yeah. the fact. I, 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 I wish, I wish but I do I have a small so. dog in I, this fight, but only a yeah. small one. I want to make also, sure that we've looked at everything yeah, right, and that right, we don't no. come back and think. I, I oh, remember when we, we looked at that. another street, at another house, I think it was Sunset Street, we were kind of seeing how visible it was. Right. And there were two different roof lines. And we had a lot of discussion about that. And finally, we said we don't like the two different roof lines, but it makes sense. Right? And they got a somewhat of a pitch, not <coughs> flat, but they got somewhat of a pitch. Yeah, that was just a little porch, right? It was a big porch. Well, yeah, but in any event. Bigger than it was. Okay. But um, I'm. Uh, if, if we were counting straw votes. I think we have to at some point. I'm not opposed in any way to the building. My problem is the berm. Just okay. to make it clear okay. where I stand. And my concern a little is uh, the devil in the details, and the devil that could come back. Right, is... <laughs> well, I have the gods in the details. Not the devil. That's <laughs> you have the gods. Mind. No, but um, since it, it is kind of a um, residential-looking facade on Main Street, yes. if, you know, we, if they, if the applicant and architects, when they, you know, refine it more, you know, if we could really get to, I don't know, I guess what the windows, the kind of windows, if they're going to have any trim, if there's going to be, you know, because I think if the concern is we don't want it grand, but it may be too plain for Main Street entrance, that that could be, in, you know, enhanced with molding, you know, and, and I've actually found myself driving around like in Northampton, as you go into town, they, they're building, I guess, apartments, and I took pictures, because they just added like nice trim, which give it a, you know, I know you're not at that point yet, or well, something. My, my wife thinks I'm looking at some woman, but actually I'm looking at the trim on the building. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, so it doesn't look Trouble. like it's, you know, we, we would want to have a, look right. like it's in, a, so it or work. that it's in a subdivision, but just, so I think, that I might feel comfortable approving it, but with some stipulation of coming back and letting us have some, see what it's, you know, ultimately actually going to look like when you get to that point. Yes, I, I'd certainly like this afternoon or at this meeting to get clear as a commission on the essential product that we can say yes to. That would be, that would, that's a personal goal. I think we would do better fair. about ourselves, and I'm sure. I think it would be fair to the applicants. Fair we, to the yeah, applicants. I mean, we, we have to be fair to the applicant, but we, we do also have to remember that we have an obligation sure, here. to the community. And uh, we, we, we can only defer to the needs of the applicant so that we're, to the point where they uh, impose, they impinge on our duty to the uh, community. To the Yeah. Well, no, I just said where I, um, I... It's a very daunting responsibility. Mm -hmm. And of course, all of us, probably everybody wishes it could be open and could be a park that could be preserved like that. It's kind of, so we're fighting that. But, uh, yeah, it's not going to, I guess it's not going to hurt that much. That's how I feel. It's not going to hurt that much. Do I think it would be better if it were not there? Yes, I do. But that's we. It's not outside our purview. It's outside our purview. Um, it's part of the issue. Yeah. Um, no, but I do um, have a question. When you talk about the roof line being low, you on the. I'm is sure. there a way? 
right, not on the west wing, yes. to not completely go back to the drawing board. But if there's, you know, I had a real issue when it was all five feet from the from the sidewalk. That was just. That's but now sense. that's, and it's 25 feet, not 20 feet back. From the sidewalk or from the street? From the edge of the sidewalk. From the edge of the inner the, edge. The near edge. The, the near edge. The near edge. The grass. Right. Yes. Good. Um, I mean, is there? You know, I don't think I'd want to see it just locked off. But is? I mean, I don't. I get what I'm hearing is that from that there is no way to lower it any further. That they've lowered it from 32 to 26. With, with a gable roof. I think. I think we've seen the best uh, solution. Now, if it didn't have a gable roof, what? It would be a box. Yeah, we don't want a box. And we don't want a box. Well, um, let, me, let me address <laughs> let, let me address Do we agree? Of, do we agree? No, you let, don't agree. Let me address the kind of <laughs> <laughs> let me address the kind of box that you might like. Now I'm getting into a design okay. approach. But um, this building here is uh, as we've said it was you said uh, ties to Gray Street. This could be... We're all looking at this, if you have this in your packets. This could be a box, but it could be uh, designed in such a way as to uh, have um, vegetation growing up. So it, so it was not the kind of box that would... Uh, uh, I'm not with you on that. that okay, that's all we need to say. I, sure I, I don't know how to this. get a lawnmower up there. Oh, don't do that. <laughs> you, uh, you, you have a guy on a ladder once. I know, uh, but, but I'm not the owner of the building, and, they own, and the owners are yeah. sitting here. But you don't but paint it, you know, yeah. that's the same. I, yes. it's, 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 it's not like we usually do, that's true. Oh, I did it on University Drive. The uh, office building University Drive okay. was a box. Yes. And the owners put arborvitae in and made an arborvitae wall. So yeah, you don't see it. You, you it it credited it. You put your vines yeah. there, Bill. You could just you put the dark brick one. one. Yeah. You could have it across the street from your office. It was done before you were born. It's way back. <laughs> <laughs> and what do you think of that here? What do you think of having a green roof? What do you think of that here? A green roof. Oh, I think it'd be fun. And is this something you could look into? Sure. I'm, I don't suggest that we change the roof. Actually, that's capped in stone at this point, it is. as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. But if you want, if if we could do something with espalier or trees in front, or that would be fun. Yeah, I'd love it. I'll make them fruit too, so you can eat them. Mm -hmm. Okay. You can use that material that I do where it's it's you know it, it's not going to, the building is not going to suffer by having vegetation going into it. I, I mean, think we'd hold the vegetation off the building. Okay, yes. well, we, right. so I think we have know, a different idea of how they could have I can't it. talk now. The commission no, 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 we're asking questions. Oh, the, okay. commission doesn't, um, the commission doesn't regulate landscape or plantings, mm -hmm. so it's really about the built form. I think, you know, there's been a number of views expressed here, and I think I'm not necessarily hearing a consensus right now from the commission. <laughs> I think, Bill, to your point that the, your applicant has a program and it needs to be met, you know, I'm not sure I'm satisfied yet that we've explored enough options to know how the program can be met in a different design. And so what we've seen is really a change in one design. And so Bruce had said, well, could there be other designs? I mean, I'm not sure. We haven't even been shown what a two-story building, a flat roof two-story building on the corner would look like. And so if the commission has these questions, again, it is, if what's here, does it satisfy it? I mean, I think the local historic district has a lot of you know, press, legal precedents to have um, design guidelines and regulations imposed on a structure. And so if an applicant is saying, well, we have to have this program, we're not going to change it, the commission can say, well, you need to if you want to get it approved. And so they have that legal precedence. And so has it been thought about enough to have, say, this is appropriate? And so, you know, I think some people might say yes right now. Some people say half of it might be. It might be in part, and so I want to make sure that we're comfortable with saying that what's being proposed here is appropriate on all levels. And so if the Gray Street side works, I still haven't heard why does it work. Is it the massing, the proportion, what is it that we can relate to the bylaw? If the western portion doesn't work, again, is it the height, is it the map, you know, what are these, the criteria? Is it the impact of the view shed? Is it the setback, the arrangement, the, the texture? And so 
I don't want to start going into, well, we can address it up with landscape, because that's not really what the commission looks at. It's really what, you know, what's the built form look like? And so if we, you know, I've heard it might block the view, it might be too big, people don't like a flat roof, so is there, if it's not a flat roof, how do we make that, that less impactful to the view or to the site? Is it a change in shape? So, you know, the roof is so high because it's proportional to how wide it is. Yes. So if you want a yeah. lower pitch roof, and that, you know, like Bill said, it's going to look pretty odd if you get down to a four pitch on a really big building like that. So yeah, I would Bruce, is saying, that. Bruce is saying, let's try to go with the least volume because then that's the least visually impactful. You know, Moran's saying that's not appropriate because it does need to relate to the buildings around it. So is that, what does that mean for the commission? Does it mean, um, do you have that same size roof, but you pull the building a little closer to Gray Street and you make the lobby smaller? Is it, is it you don't want that roof? Well, we I want, you know, I, so, I think, okay. I think, I mean, I, you know, I think, because I'm not hearing a consensus, I think I'm hearing people saying, well, maybe it'll work. I want to make sure we can relate it to the criteria and we can say, okay, I mean, I'd love for, for everyone to say why Gray Street works. I want to hear, you know, if, I think it, if it's getting there, is it, what is it? You know, why do we like it? Is it the height, the scale, the setback? Is it all those things? You know, add something to it that I'm not saying because I think that can help the applicant understand why the other massing may not be working. And maybe the applicant understands why the other massing isn't working from the comments, but I feel like we haven't provided that kind of grounded discussion yet in terms of the criteria. And I want to make sure we are. We wanted, like, literally. No, I mean, if, yeah. if more, you know, Morian said, you know, it works on Gray Street, and I think you've already you've said a few things, and I just want to make sure we, we can say why, you know. It, it, I, mean, I, I mean, for me, it works on Gray Street because it fits in with the Gray Street progression of um, not ornate, you know, um, what do we call them, colonial farmhouse. Labbered kind of. Labbered thing. houses. Uh, so, so the, and also the setbacks. The way they are set back, you know, as a progression up Gray Street, I think works very nicely. So uh, that, for me, fits. And it doesn't, although it does interrupt the, view, the openness from here, that, for me, is a given, given the sale of the lot and the uh, zoning of the lot. I mean, when that happened, it was given away because something was going to be built. So I have to say I'm not considering that anymore. So all that I'm considering is, yes, the corner fits Gray Street, and I, I don't see much on Main Street I would want to fit. So I have to figure out what would work adjacent, connected to the part that does fit. And for me, this is about the best that my limited imagination can come up with. The so way it is now? The way it is now. So that, as I said before, my problem is with the burn, not the building. And I would agree with you, Marianne. If, if, you, are, if, you, if you cannot find favor with taking that flat roof and putting it down mm -hmm. and, and, and recognizing that it would have to be tiered because of the ceiling height obligation requirement over the thing, if, if, if that is something that you can't abide, then uh, then, then I would agree with you. Because it would pick up the box-like look I'm, on the north side and if, if that I don't like. And I, I, I'm certainly not going to have a lot consensus on this. I want to make sure that we, that, and I recognize that for two of you this is really difficult because this is a complicated discussion when you've had very little exposure to the the processes that we're going through here. And, uh, I don't even know it's that. Yeah. Yeah, this is the first time we've had to, in addition to that, yeah, well, this is a true. brand new, we've never had yeah. to approve so a brand new structure where there wasn't I'm, one before. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to, I wouldn't vote against this uh, if I thought that we had explored amongst ourselves what we think, and it doesn't, I don't have to agree with what we think to vote for it, which sounds a little odd, but I, because I want to make sure that the committee is of a mind, the commission is of a mind to pursue this. We we spent a lot of time looking at this, and and as Bill and his colleagues have progressively improved this, we've been kind of going down a funnel, if you like, or a tunnel, or a, or a process. 
usually with design, you you develop conceptual options at the beginning, you choose one, and then you develop it. This process doesn't invite us to do that in quite the same way, and I think we are disadvantaged by it. Yeah, and I, I would suggest that. in a whole other conversation at another time that this commission examine its mandate in that regard, because I think we have a constraint here which is leading us to suboptimal solutions and Although will always lead us to suboptimal right. solutions. So I have a problem with that, but that's a problem for another day. Um, we are now exploring an option ourselves, um, that, and if we think we can explore it um, in our own imaginations right here, and it feels like we might be able to, then, uh, and if we come through, and this is the scheme that we prefer, and we would like to further and refine it to you know, maybe uh, a little further, then I think that's great. I, I'm, I've been frustrated by the fact that we've been led down this funnel and that all of our conversation has been leading in one direction and I think we've been leaving other options behind. We've had this conversation today and we clearly haven't. I kind of agree behind. because I think when you look from the main street, that's what bothers us is just a little bit of a hodgepodge of roofs. The, the line is not something that you would have done if you were, didn't were told that has to go back further and all that things, I think. So aesthetically, I don't think it looks great from the front at all, and that does bother me. And I do think that in our um, mandate here, it's not that we just have to have something that fits and echoes the environment. The mandate is to also look at something completely innovative if it's gonna enhance it. So. That's why I like the idea. Maybe it's too late. I probably came too late in the game uh, because I agree at the, the beginning there the should beginning. have been. This is the many, first time we've been able to do this. Right. So the, no at the beginning there should have been somebody that said, give us these three, five radically different sketches. Don't put all your time in it. You went on one place and then we said, but you've got to put this back. And, and you did all those things. No, so what we've we come up with is this compromise which is not bad, but is it something that I'm going to feel like, whoa, we did a wonderful thing to Amherst, and now Amherst Media is beautiful. No, I will not feel that way, unless you cover the whole thing with vines and it disappears. <laughs> I mean, what if that was, I'm just throwing something out, glass? Would that make it look less, I mean, could there be, I don't know, could there be any glass, or something that would make it look less massive, you know, a little more transparent, if it couldn't be... Oh, well, graffiti. I, <laughs> yeah, graffiti. I think that might be a... <laughs> That's too. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking uh, on... Um, and also for in Hadley, I know a lot of uh, people yeah. who would jump what's in that way. What's being on the inside? But, uh, especially I know. if it was I'm a just trying to think of it as a... Uh, well, something. We, we did a mass model, which was before you were on board, yeah. to specifically to explore different options for where we would put it, how high, whatever. We made models, little blocks. Yeah. Nate wasn't on board either. So we met as a group at Town Hall to go over the very concepts because we had such a short timeline, because it was such a long period before we could meet with you as a board because it was vacation time. Mm -hmm. So we went through that phase. Mm -hmm. That's why we built the model. And the only reason mm -hmm. was that we could participate with you at concept. And this is what we select. Now, if you're looking for a reason it looks the way it looks, and why I like the way it looks, being a farmer, you could tell. <laughs> this is the house, and that's the barn. That's what I thought. And you, <laughs> and you do something in the barn because you're a business, way. like you manufacture tombstones <laughs> down the street. And what do you know? The barn becomes a business, a business where they make TV shows belongs perfectly. And it's not Victorian architecture booths. It's a little bit like 40 years yeah, before be. that. Right. So, so Bill's just suggested that the, the, the treatment of the western volume could be simpler and different from the treatment of the eastern volume. Yeah. Does, uh, does that land well with this group? Not really. Because it's on main street. the idea of flattening mm -hmm. that roof would be just a mistake. It would be cheaper the property itself. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think particularly with the higher gable peak, if you lowered it down like a ranch house, it would look like hell. Mm -hmm. That would, yes, I agree with you there. I'm not sure. I just don't quite know how you 
really do a flat roof and make it look good. I think there you're you talking about a flat roof or a tiered? No, well, it would have to be two flat roofs because the ceiling height in the studio is 14 feet and the ceiling height for the rest of the spaces is less than that. So we have to do one flat roof that was high. Like inside would be like a tray roof inside the ceiling? Uh, I mean, from just listening to their program, the, the ceiling height in the uh, northwest corner there is, uh, is where the studio is, has to be higher than the ceiling height, which means in this case, if it's yeah. a flat roof, the roof height would have to reflect that uh, that difference. So it would be two tier, it would be two elevations of flatness on a flat roof, I think. I mean, that would be yeah. my It just gets away from the architecture that's in the neighborhood. Um, exactly. My point is Why are we doing that? To you're suggesting make it less yeah. massive. My, my, my feeling is that the route to appropriateness here is to diminish the mass, to diminish the volume, and to well, make its presence less. That, that uh, sounds great, but you're going to do an awful cheap trick to do that by putting a flat roof there. Flat That's roofs what I don't wanted you all I to engage with. And yeah. You've done it, and, and I, I, I think done there it. There are very elegant flat roof structures. Very, it's not going to look like that cheap uh, claw foot. Uh, mm -hmm hot top thing necessarily. Yeah, there are, there are it's it's you're reducing the mass and making a place where the land and the other buildings are speaking loudly, uh, you're you're reducing your presence in an elegant way. I understand your logic and I just say how are you gonna do that? How is it what's it gonna look like? What what's it like? Yeah. That's so I'm hearing Nate say like, that you don't feel like it's totally well, there yet. So I'm saying, right, no, so how do we... My, I, what I'm trying to say is I want the, you know, so you know, Morian did it with the west, with the no. eastern part. I want the commission to be able to use the bylaw and the criteria to say, okay, well, you know, if what what would work here? So, you know, the applicant, the hearing's still open. The projects that you know, the commission hasn't voted. So, you know, Jim's saying he thinks a flat roof isn't going to work. Um, and so, you know, Bruce said he maybe would vote against it. So, is is it fine now, or are there there's still these lingering things where the commission could say, well, we want to explore a few different options that might make it work better? I'm not saying one way or the other, I'm, you know, when you were discussing it earlier, it wasn't in relationship to the, you know, uh, you know, back to the criteria, and I think we're starting to get there. So we're starting to articulate, okay, how are things working or not working? I think we're still exploring how it can work on the Western maps. And so, you know, if the commission feels like this is the design we're gonna get, then we can say, okay, let's take a straw vote and close the hearing, or do we wanna continue to talk about, are there other options here that could work for the, you know, keep the hearing open, are there other options that could work and still to talk about it? But, so. so since we're not architects, I mean, we could say we'd like to see the Western Wing mm -hmm. not be maybe so massive, but then we have to defer back to the architects if that right. can be. Yeah, and that's. Could, and ask them that now. Right. right. Well, do we ever get to talk, for, hmm? you. Do we ever get to talk among ourselves as, I mean, it, it could be an open, but this is very hard situation in which to have have real conversation yes, about yes. all this. It's the only opportunity we have. How do we? Yeah. We're, so we're legally bound to hold it this way. Well, we can. I mean, we could always set the table up differently, but you know, we if we wanted to continue it till next week and set up, we have to do it. You know, in a public setting, and you need the public needs to be able to hear okay. what's being said. So either we can, you know, mic everyone up, or but it has to be in this type of setting. And also, is it possible? to do a straw vote and a decision on the building separate from the berm. Uh, because we haven't talked about the berm. And the location and size of the berm is related to the location and size of the building, particularly the west wing. It's related to the number of parking places that are required by bylaw, but there could be a waiver on that if we could convince everybody, if I could convince everyone to have fewer parking spaces 
in order to move the berm over more since the bus service is right at the front of where the building. So the, the difficulty for me is these are different issues. They're both structures. They're both new structures. And we have to think of the visual impact on an open field of a complicated multi-structured building and a berm, which is a separate structure. So I don't see how we can do that in one vote. Well, but I don't see how to disentangle them. Well, no, we can uh, we can do it in we can do it on a, a straw vote, and I I would suggest that we don't close the meeting as a consequence. We just know um, the direction that we see, and um, because there are Jennifer, you asked me. We by the way, for folks, we're able to communicate one to one. So I email Jennifer and I copy Nate, or the other way around. That's, that's allowed. Um, like uh, uh, Jim or others can no, do they, the same. No, they, you are not allowed I didn't to think cue allowed. us into your no, email. we can't. I'm we the chair, are that's not why I allowed. see things. We, if you have your own discussion of two or three people, we may not participate in it. No, no, no. No, no. no. no what I'm saying, Marianne, is I have a question also. I, I email Jennifer and I said, I have a point of view, I have thought about it. Uh, I want to tell you as chair, because she has to run this meeting, it's going to be helpful to her if she knows that some of us or any one of us is going to be in our vomit. So I email Jennifer and I tell her the nature of the bee that's in my bonnet. That's fine. But that's as far as we can go. Yeah. Um, so, uh, so, but so this concept is the first time so, anybody else has heard it. So, in that exchange, you said uh, you would uh, ask for maybe it was about a conditioned approval. In, in other words, and I said I don't know what I said to you, but I said to myself, you know, I would really like to have this discussion before I invested time and effort into thinking about what about this could. I, what, if anything, I could suggest that would make it better or more appropriate. Um, I didn't really want to spend time on that until we had this discussion. But if the discussion yields a, a, a commission preference for this direction, then I would like the opportunity to respond to that request of yours, or maybe it was just a question. Um, there are a couple of things. And the burn would be in that category. I mean, they're, they're essentially in the greater scheme of things details, somewhat small details. It's a small detail that's important to you. And I've got a couple of other small details, maybe, that would be important to me. And they can be relatively quickly dealt with once we know where we're headed. So I would say a straw vote or something would be helpful to our um, process. And Nate, would you like the straw vote just to see where, e where we're each at, but in relation to the bylaw? Well, yeah, always, but yeah, right. I mean, so, you know, but how... But articulate that. Right. I mean, I think, you know, to the point about the berm, it is, it could be a condition that it be altered with, um, but, you know, um, in a future meeting, but I think the, you know, it is sized because of the amount of impervious surface, so, um, you know, if there's thoughts that it, you know, obviously, Maureen, you, you think that it's, it's an issue there, and so the question is, for me then is can the berm be reduced in height? Could there be more than one big detention basin? Could there be a linear system that is shallower? And so, you know, we don't know. And so to me that's the question. Is the there engineering question? Right. And so well, our engineers here. Sure. Maybe but, you so could. you know, I mean that I think to say that oh it could be dealt with later, it could be or it may you know may not be. Yeah, so if that's right. a question I that's you know, okay, so I think that that's been raised. So how do we ask? How do we ask that question and get a response? Uh, that's. But it is detail. And is there going to be more opening for public input? Yes, we could do that. Our engineer is here. He can respond to those questions. Yeah, happy to, but that, that's that's a strange. And, and could we then, after we talk with the engineer, go to open because we? I mean, we people have been very patient. We haven't had a chance to talk. We had to have a chance to talk. 
you had to sit here and listen to us because that's yeah, our public comment. Yeah, we'll do six thirty. We'll do cut public comment. Okay. So we. Um, okay. I mean, if Bruce had you had some small details, Maureen. You said you had some. I mean, it'd be good to take a a uh, straw vote and then see where where people feel about certain elements of it. If that's how we want to go. Okay. I mean, if that's well, let's do. We want to start it. This ends, so you don't feel like you're left out Why of the conversation. Why don't we listen to what folks have to say? Well, no, I think we're going to take a straw vote. Take a straw vote first before we, we are. Public comment, or we won't get back to. We, we will. You'll say we're done here. Straw, we're straw, straw vote. Straw yeah, vote meaning, are we ready to say okay? We take. No, no, just where we generally stand on that would be <laughs> straw. You know right. how we feel. So somebody else lead that has done this before. What? I mean, I would. Go ahead. Say I. Um, I feel like we asked that, well, at the first meeting, what, in back in March, what was the public comment was requested that the building be put to the southeast corner of the lot, and that it should not be in the middle of the two parcels obscuring the, letter, the Amherst Women's Club and the Henry Hills House. So that that was done, and the uh, you know the the public that commented said that they had envisioned based on the town meeting vote that the building would be a continuation of the homes on Gray Street. So I think that we we've done that. Um, I would you know yes I would like to see it set back maybe more from Main Street, but I don't think that that's possible and I appreciate that they have recessed the west wing 25 feet um, and they you know it's not actually in, in it's not in front of either of the two mansions um, you know I the, you know I have to acknowledge that I think that once any building goes there it's a, it's not it takes away from the landscape that's there now, but the owner has a right to build on the property. If there was a way to reduce the the roof line of the West Wing, I think that might be, you know, preferred, but I could live with it the way it is. I would want, though, the, you know, applicant to come back and I would want us to be able to see the details of the facade so that nothing is a surprise to the commission when it's, when it's built. I think we have to, you know, our faith with the town, you know, we have an obligation to the town to know exactly what it's going to look like. When you say exactly. details of the facade, do you mean that they would change it with different window patterns or more about in terms of the treatment of what's there? I, I guess I'm not. Um, I'm yeah, not I would want to, I feel like I don't, you know, I'd actually want to see the, you know, like when people come to us with an addition, they actually bring in the kind of wood. You know, they show us what right. lights are going to be there. They show us what trims are going to be around the window. They'll okay. literally have an example. They'll bring in the window. We can see. Yeah. So I would want I would want that level of detail. Well, it's a whole new building, so they would have a track and trailer yes. full of stuff first. I mean, if we pursue that the way we do with these small Yeah. Additions. Well, I think we'd have to see some, you know, I. Yeah. I'd want to know that it didn't look like a subdivision house, that it looked like, you know, the, the sort of well, we, quality we, we, and care of something we, 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 we had that in, in, uh, in written form. Right. right. So that's, no idea. that's just my one. But are we straw voting here? Yeah, we're just okay. saying what, so that's that's where I come to you down. Okay. Yeah. So you're saying you could live with it? I could so live with so it. If, boat is yes, boat it, is I would like to see if there's a way to reduce the height, the mass on the west wing. I would like to see that, but I think that we, I do think it's responded to the major requests that came from public comment during the meeting in March. And, and I'm, also, I'm also not sure. When we vote like this, is it the majority that, I mean, we don't have to all seven no, we, if we do a form, when we, if when formal, we do a formal vote, vote, we have to have a majority. So if six majority, majority, not, uh, unanimous. No, no, just majority. And if we were to vote, because one of our members is not here today, right? It would have to be four. 
that right. vote yes, yes. That's that's before, before other six. Okay. Yeah. Right now it's three to three. I wouldn't no necessarily. Idea. No, I wouldn't necessarily. You're no. with me. Uh, I was going to say ditto. Um, uh, however, I'm holding back because I would like to know when we get to the moment from the engineer whether there can be multiple tanks or holding vessels or whatever is needed that would not rise to the height that goes right when you're standing and looking up, as I was, to the edge of the Hills Mansion. I yeah. just, uh, I don't, I, I just, um, it doesn't work visually for me. Uh, so that's my problem. I would, uh, of course, want to see the detail about the plans for the, um, the, the, the uh, you know, the gables, um, uh, whether there was any kind of decor in that, particularly the one facing Main Street. I'd like to know the kind of stonework or whatever work is going into the entrance of the, uh, I'd like to know much more detail about the entrance, uh, the retaining wall. I'd like to know what it's made out of because that great, that uh, coming from the east, you're going to see that, and then you're going to see that stone wall that was there, and. They could really be at odds with each other, so I want to see how that plays out visually. So uh, what I would like to do is to have us have a basic agreement tonight, if we can, with then a follow-up that really looked very carefully at detail. So basically you're with Eastern? Yes, I am, because I don't see where else to be. Okay. And I don't think given, it, I gi given the rezoning of the land, right. the ownership of the land, the requirements of the owners to build what they need to function as Amherst Media, I see no other options. Okay. But and I, I think you can own land and have certain requirements, Sorry. and unfortunately, those requirements are not going to fly on the particular land that you, that you yeah. purchased. I think that's also an option. So this is something that I wrote, and I would say, honestly, I will not hold up this building if the if if you feel that way. I see the work that's been here. I feel at a loss that I haven't been part of this before, but this is what I wrote, because this is the way that I feel my obligation on this committee is. It says, does this building on this site physically or aesthetically enhance this important and one-of-a-kind site? Indeed, one of the only open vistas to a historically important and visually spectacular combination of houses. The two Dickinson houses, the Hills Mansions, are a truly spectacular combination to be seen as a whole and indeed one of our most treasured attractions that sets this town apart from all others. Or does it just do its utmost best to minimize negative impact? And that's what I said that I feel it does. Does it encourage a vital and inviting downtown or can it be summed up as right project, wrong place? And when I wrote that, I, I talked to my brother about this, and he said, when you read this, be sure you bring a bowl of feathers and some tar, too, and save the other people the problem, because I realize <laughs> this is not a popular way, but that's the way that I feel. I feel that if I can somehow, um, too late in the game, but somehow stir something so that we don't make a detriment to this space, that would be good. On the other hand, having heard Moria, who's been part of this for so long, and agreeing that if anybody deserves to be there, it would be Amherst Media, I'm not going to vote against it. That's my feeling. Thank you. And I would add, it's not even, uh, to me, I don't know, so much, you know, who um, deserves to, to be there, but Something is going to go there, and we can't keep something. But we have a there. say in if it's aesthetically <coughs> going to enhance or hurt that area. That's yeah, true. I agree. That's our That's, say. That's our regulatory rule. Yes, but if I, I think there's some agreement that 
anything and that I goes there with the gray side. Right, that, that, that's good. That's you know, that good. We, Unfortunately, it's a we like damage. the open green space, so anything that goes there takes away some of the open green space. But that's we can't we we, we can't uh, our decision can't be to keep the open green space. You said we'd have come up comments. Uh, uh, Peggy so has better. I'm not sure I have much more I can say. I'm so so torn about it. On the one hand, I love the openness and and it's, it's the sense of historicity that I get coming into Amherst and, and driving up that way and, and and who lives there and what those houses are that just never it, it never doesn't move me. I mean it's just so unusual and and I just feel so so gifted to live it in such a beautiful place. Uh, but as I'm listening and thinking and just trying to envision all this, I'm also a city girl, and I really miss the act activity of life in a city. But suddenly it occurs to me, and it's the first time I'm really having the thought of the building in use, and that, wow, there'd be young people coming and going over there. And wouldn't that be fun? And maybe there'd be another cafe, and maybe we'd have a, a little, so I, I can see how it could, it, it could bring, could, it could be seeding a new chapter and a, and a change in Amherst that might, that might, who knows what it might do. I can't say what it might do. I can fantasize all sorts of different directions. So how will I vote? I don't, I mean, I'm just still, I just, <laughs> but, I'm, but the conversations have been challenging to hear and to think through and I'm come to grips with, and I'm not sure I quite have yet in terms of, of a vote, but I'm, but I'm also, I'm feeling uh, the positive energy that, that could come out of it, and not, not just a resistance to changing that open space. So it's how do you balance the open that's, space that's with that's the contemporary question. needs and life and energies that need mm -hmm. to be shaped and grown. Thank you. So I think we're a couple minutes late for. Um, Hold on. Yeah. Oh. Uh, sorry. I know I think. <laughs> so. Um, so I would June vote. Uh, yes, June has. Uh, uh, at this point, I would uh, uh, withhold my vote for appropriateness. I would ask the uh, applicant to. I would. I, I would. I would try and. Uh, cause the applicant to explore creatively something that the rest of you are not interested in, um, which is to do a, 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 a flat, a, a flat, a delicate, functional, um, appropriate, however it's achieved. Um, I'm sure it can be achieved, because I've done it. And I know Bill Burton, oh, he's gone, but I know he's, I, I know, I, I worked for him for five years a long time ago. I know he's a very smart guy and he's been doing this longer than even I have. So I know it's within it. Um, at least I think I do. So I would like to push the applicant to do that. Um, but uh, <coughs> I, uh, my sense is that I would be outvoted in this. It seems as a, as a commission we have a, a, a very weak uh, endorsement of proceeding. And, but if weak though it is, it's, uh, it's a position. And uh, so what I should do now, I guess, uh, know when I go home tonight and beyond, is to look, to do what you asked me to do, which I never did because I needed to know that I needed to do it. And it feels to me now that you all are pushing us to explore the, uh, the, the, the considerations and so forth, Nate, that staff have put in their report because it's a long list of uh, right. questions and, and, uh, and, and, and levers that uh, uh, you are suggesting that the Commission pull in order to uh, satisfy everybody that we've done our right. But it seems to me that we're um, telling the applicant that they're, despite what I say, that they're, um, that we should move forward with the scheme. Well, we're... Is that correct? I mean, I think we need to be clear and with ourselves. Yeah, why don't we have the open and then we'll, yeah. Open. I mean, we said that we would, you know, be open to softening or doing something with the western we wing. also feel that we do have to respond to community. 
But so. yeah, don't forget, we've had three of these meetings. This is mm -hmm. the third, and this is the first one that we've actually taken time for ourselves. Yeah. So we shouldn't feel defensive about that. We just cannot okay. afford to feel defensive about that. This was our time. We had to take. Yeah, no, no, I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, and we we are not rushed on this application. Yeah. We have to do it thoroughly. Okay. Um, how many just by show of hands people would like to speak? Okay. Should we um, give everybody a number and take them in order? Mm -hmm. Okay. Can we do two or three, three minutes. Um, uh, do it. Um, Sure, Ms. Scott yes. Wilkinson, we'll come up in 20 Gray Street. Um, drop all my things. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity to speak to you all again. And um, thank you also for the seriousness with which you're taking this. Um, I want to remind you that the decision you do make is uh, permanently, for all intents and purposes, going to affect this historic district. And I would remind you that the entrance to the historic district and the sign announcing this historic district is right there on the corner and will stand right in front of this building. Um, I also hope we, uh, a bunch of uh, neighbors on Gray Street, all on Gray Street, um, eight homeowners, um, most of which are historic homes, uh, submitted a letter today, one additional uh, homeowner, uh, most of them are here today, but one additional one signed it after it was submitted. So I do hope that you got to read that and fully consider it. Um, you know, I, I heard one of the comments that Nate said, and I hope he could elaborate at some point a little bit more. Uh, I don't think, from what I understand, you are not under an obligation to approve something here. You are under an obligation to adhere to your guidelines. And if you came up with a set of design guidelines and a building could not meet those, I, I don't think that you're under any obligation to approve something. Um, regardless of the applicant, um, which I think everyone is sympathetic to who this applicant is and what their mission is, but I don't think it is you have an obligation to consider who this applicant is. Um, back in March, you did lay out those four guidelines that you wanted this project to adhere to. And while I totally recognize and appreciate how much they have clearly tried to do to meet those, uh, the one in particular that leaps out at me that they have not been able to do is to, um, to ha design a building that is more consistent with the pastoral landscape of the district. Um, and that, I think, um, cannot be, should not be minimized, either because of this berm, which seems incredibly significant, and because of the view that is going to be cut off um, from Main Street and approaching from the east. Um, I think I would just uh, conclude again by reminding you all that you know the, the bylaws clearly state that your the purpose of the commission is to aid in the preservation and protection um, of the distinctive characteristics in architectural buildings and places. Uh, to maintain and improve uh, this district, not to do the least amount of harm possible. Um, and there's a big, huge gap between those two things. Um, doing the least possible harm is not what your charge is. It's uh, maintaining and improving the historic character of this, this district. And I hope that you decide to do that tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Dr. Shabazz, did you have your oh, did you want to speak? No. Oh. Okay. Welcome to speak. Seems like several of them. Good evening. I'm Felicity Hardy. I represent Harmsway, which is the owner of the Hills House uh, property. Um, and I, I, Ms. Wilkinson said it really um, very, very correctly, which is you, the, the commission is not under an obligation to approve something that the members think will detrimentally affect the historic district. And I've heard now two members say that they think that even though the applicant has done a, you know, a very good job of trying its best to come up with a plan that would satisfy um, the comments of the commission and the comments of the public, that it hasn't done it. I've heard two members say that. I've heard two members say that this project is going to detrimentally affect a, an historic district in the town of Amherst. And it isn't 
It isn't a reason to vote for an application because other members disagree. That's not, that is not the basis by which the members have to make a decision. What you have to do, and you're going to be very ably guided in this by uh, Mr. Malloy, what you have to do is figure out whether this project satisfies the criteria of the bylaw. And if you think it doesn't, then you must uh, vote to disapprove the request for the certificate of appropriateness. That's, that's your job. Your job is not to redesign it or to try to ameliorate a bad situation. We all recognize it's a bad situation, but that's not your task. Your task is to look at this project and figure out whether or not it meets the criteria of the um, historic bylaw, and if it doesn't, then you have to say no. So I know there are lots of other people here who want to um, speak to some of the things that have been discussed tonight, but I would just observe, <coughs> I've heard now two people on this uh, commission say that they believe that this project is going to detrimentally affect the historic character of this uh, location, and um, I would urge you to listen to those feelings and um, try to apply what's in front of you to the um, to the bylaw and render a decision on that basis. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, second row? Yeah. You. <laughs> Ed Wilford, living at 48 Gray Street. Uh, somewhat uh, a historian or house historian of buildings, old buildings in Amherst. Looking at the long view, what if this compromise building doesn't in the long run fit the needs of Amherst Media. It becomes a liability for them if they have to get rid of it. It becomes a liability for the town what to do with it. Compromise, 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 compromise. That's how we divide and conquer. Barry Roberts is the person who divided up the Henry Hills property into all these little lots. And that started the ball rolling toward commercializing, the possibility of commercializing the property. Of building rather than leaving the land open as it was, as it was meant to be back when the Hills acquired the property in the 1860s. We're looking narrowly at the present. There's a longer view to be taken for the benefit of Amherst and what you see Amherst become. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Robert Spicer, I live at 38 Gray Street, which is the Henry Hills House. Uh, the suggestions made by the Dickinson Local Historic District Commission have greatly improved the design of the building that Amherst Media proposes to build. But Rather than the design details, the question that the Commission has to ask is whether building the structure will significantly adversely affect the character of the local historic district. Clearly, it will. That being the case, the project cannot be deemed appropriate. If Amherst Media prefers to construct a freestanding building, other land can readily be acquired without the constraints of building on a wet lot within a historic district. This, of course, would require money, although it would certainly cost less per acre than the land they now own. But Tony Brackett and I are prepared to provide a solution to that problem. 
As the commission might be aware, we previously offered to purchase the two lots that Amherst Community Television owns at Gray and Main Streets, lots 14B-250 and 14B-251 for $260,000. We hereby make concurrent offers to Amherst Community Television and the Dickinson Local Historic District and or the town of Amherst. We offer to purchase the two lots for $275,000 without contingencies with the ability to close within 14 days of acceptance of the offer. This offer is of course somewhat negotiable, although that might be difficult for Amherst Community Television since it has already advised the Superior Court that the lots are not worth more than $290,000. Simultaneously, in the event that Amherst Community Television accepts this offer, we hereby offer the Dickinson Local Historic District a gift of the larger lot, 14B-251, to be used as a park or public garden, subject to an easement or other arrangement that would, that would enable the owner of 14 Gray Street to make some boundary adjustments with 38 Gray Street and to leave alleged encroachments by 14 Gray Street onto lot 14B-251 intact. Both lots will be restricted to ensure that no structures would be built on either. I am prepared to present a formal offer to both Amherst Media and to the Dickinson Local Historic District immediately. Thank you. Demetria Shabazz, and um, I am the president of Amherst Media. Not usually addressed as who I am, but I am Dr. Demetria Shabazz. I work in oral history. Along with my husband, we have created two nonprofits that looks at and helps in the preservation of African American built environments in both Alabama and Houston, Texas. I have a deep respect for history. But I do feel, I must say, personally and professionally, as difficult as I see your job is, and I think it is difficult, but it's not the end of the world in trying to make this decision. Things will change. It changed when we purchased the property in 2013 that Mr. Spicer and his partner are well aware. We own that property since 2013 with the intention, and you can go back historically in the Gazette and other, you know, Mass Live, and you will see, we have always stated, we plan on building on this these two lots. That is not something that we have, you know, hidden. We've been very transparent. Now, your job, of course, is to, I agree, as their attorney has specified, look at the bylaws and follow the bylaws. What I am hearing as a resident of Amherst is that you really value not only your position, of course, and you're trying to do your best in serving this community, but there's other folks in this community. There's the children that you talk about that we serve yearly, from elementary school, middle school, high school, and college students, teaching them media skills and giving them an outlet to learn. And that they're able to go and do broadcasting, uh, have leadership roles, et cetera, in the community. We do that. We do it for free. I spent my summer for two months creating a program for elementary school and middle school kids on the environment and the use of media to tell that story for free. I am a college professor. I do it because of the work that these folks, the staff, and the volunteers are committed to, and the role of democracy and transparency in this town. That is the jewel 
and the crown of this community. You can argue, and I'm not discounting Dickinson, I'm not discounting these homes, but it's what we do in this community, that is the jewel. And we have been doing it for 44 years and we work for every dollar. And so that $340,000 that we pay for that property, those two lots, 340 is now worth because we had someone, an outside person come in to look at it, it's worth over 350. And so when you talk about 275,000 and we should be grateful, we're working for every dollar, begging <laughs> and literally having to beg for Eversource to keep us there where we are now renting, it's an insult. And so yes, I do ask for you to do your job. We have tried to meet everything you have suggested. You were happy that we did not echo the business district and now I hear today that maybe we should. So we're betwixt and between and we have been trying to be very diligent. So if you could come with some specificity in which we can create a structure that will be a part of this community, that's what we would like to take back to our architects who have been working so hard to make this happen. We're about history and we document that history daily. And we'd like to remain in this community, but we need a permanent home in which to do this. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, yes, back around. Hi, my name is Vera Duarte Cage, and I'm the Vice President of Amherst Media. Um, I think I'd like to speak more on a personal level at this point. Um, I live in, I think under Dr. Thomas's <coughs> leadership, um, we've uh, comprised of the most, probably the most diverse board ever in Amherst Media's history, right? Um, not only racially, but class. Um, women, you know, are on our board. So it's, it's a whole different board than what people um, have known over the years. And I also am a renter. I live at Butternut Farm Apartments. And if you know the struggles in Amherst around affordable housing, um, that was a, a complex that struggled for a long time to exist um, at on Long Meadow Drive, right, um, by Hampshire College. Um, so it, it took about 10 years, right, for um, the building to actually break ground and welcome families. So it wasn't the end of the world for our neighbors um, who resisted the, the building. And I'm really, I think, for the first time um, hopeful, got a little bit inspired um, by your comments, um, Peggy. I think that if we can imagine change as transformative, as positive, I think that may be the exception um, for our existence here on this corner of Gray and, Gray, Gray and Maine. I brought my son out here because, you know, we debriefed at, with him at our last meeting and we talked about, you know, whose voices are missing from this conversation. And I think it's, it's the young people and I thought it was important for him to come here and to observe the, the process. And, you know, for him, he mentioned you know, it was about location. It's ideal for our middle schoolers, our high schoolers to just walk down um, as the doors close from their school just to come to Amherst Media and to get in front of the computer or get in front of behind the camera or, you know, get involved in a program. It's about location for them, right? They're not, um, you know, with vehicles, right? 
they're within walking distance. Right now, Amherst Media is located on College Street, and um, it's not as accessible as it would be on at, at this particular location, and it's you know right near downtown. So we would really benefit as an organization from their energy, from their creativity, from what they can create and produce, right? Because that's what we do. Um, and I think that's something to be considered for our community. So, you know, I try not to jump out of my skin when I hear people talk about this not being the right location, great project, wrong location. Um, I try not to get offended when I talk about, well, it doesn't fit in, it doesn't belong. Um, and, and so I, I, you know, I'm very respectful of the deliberation that you all have to make um, in, in terms of your decision. But I, I ask you, you know, yes, it's, it's a beautiful open space. I appreciate it too. Um, but I'm just hoping that you all could make an exception for Amherst Media to exist here and really try to help us exist here um, instead of fighting our existence here. Um, so time is of the essence, right? Um, I'm sure you don't want to be in front of us doing this forever, um, but we have our own limitations and constraints about where we can be, um, and so it's not like we're going to disappear either, so we're just asking, I'm asking for you all to work with us, to believe that we can exist in this space and to help us imagine and push us forward to being in this space. Thank you. Thank you. How many more? Um, okay. Four. Okay, so I'm going to really limit it to four more people. Uh, no, I mean a couple of minutes <coughs> each. I want everybody to be able to have a chance to speak. I'm not going to limit the number of people. Just want to. Eight before. <laughs> yeah, each. <laughs> I'm Elsie Fetterman. I live in Amherst on Lifetime Road. And I'm very encouraged tonight that you were all willing to take a straw vote to see how each of you felt. And I don't think any of us knew. I didn't know the legality that you couldn't have talked about it. My big concern is what is the criteria now? Now that you've had your, your discussion, and so on. What is it that you are looking for, the criteria to make this happen? And if you know the, if I know the rules of the road, I will drive accordingly. And so I think the job now is you've all had an opportunity to get an idea of where you're all, from whence you come. What is acceptable and can we move forward these are the criteria that we now need. This is what we need from you. This is the next step. Thank you. And I, I appreciate it. Thank you. And um, I will respond to that after everybody's spoken. Yes. I'll just take a couple of minutes. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say oh, your that. Name and, oh, yeah. okay. My name is Nico Gadera. I'm at 446 Main Street. Okay. Uh, first, I'd like to say that I, uh, I'm a fan of Amherst Media. I very much support what, uh, what Amherst Media does, and I think everybody else here does. I don't know that anybody does not. Uh, I believe that um, supporting the mission of uh, Amherst Media is not, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that, yes, we have to push for having Amherst Media in this particular spot, and uh, other spots should be looked at. Uh, I just want to point out really one thing as you do your job, whatever whatever that is at, at, at this point, you've heard different things. Um, when you look at these pictures, I live at, uh, at Gray Street and I walk down and I look at this every day. And it's hard to see in these pictures, but this is the view from when you're walking down Gray Street and this is the corner of Maine. Uh, when you're standing here, you're about this big, 
just like the little top on my pen here, basically. This roof is not colored in. That is not invisible. That roof is solid. And when you're standing here, that's blocking the view when you're walking all the way down here as you're looking up this way and as you're coming up from Main Street. So I think that it's important to see that, not only that, but when you're on Main Street as well, and you're looking straight up toward the houses that are behind the project, this roof here, that's not transparent. That should be filled in. And that just illustrates a little bit more of the mass that will be visible when you're down on the street. And as a neighbor, that stands out to me that uh, you know, I'm, I'm hearing people talking about uh, going by there and talking about the east side of the building looks okay and, and every, it's acceptable and so on. If you look at the west side from the east side, what you're seeing, the big bulk is the west side. It's that big building. It's not the, the smaller one. So just keep that in mind as you're doing your uh, deliberations is all that I uh, ask. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. I think there's two more. Did Dr. Shabazz? No, no, are you ready to hear me from? Um, Milkar Shabazz, uh, Chapel Road here in Amherst. Um, I um, come from a perspective informed from many years of uh, concerns such as you're embarked upon. Uh, in the fourth largest city, Houston, Texas, I served for a number of years on the Houston Archaeological Historical Commission, uh, which had the, essentially the same um, uh, responsibility as you have here in the state of Alabama for a number of years. I served on the state review board that all applications came through uh, for um, an historic district at the state level. Um, I am very concerned with, uh, I've never seen an owner um, of, uh, of a property coming in to build in an historic district um, undergo quite the, um, the level of, um, uh, of scrutiny and uh, abuse, really, as I've seen in, in, this, in, in the case of this project, um, with 30, more, more than 30 years of uh, active involvement with uh, historic preservation. Um, it's amazing, it's astounding. But I think the real question is, is um, this is new building, and the question is, has, uh, have the, has the work been done from the original proposals to make this a design compatible with the existing structure? Doesn't say enhance it, doesn't say add to the aesthetics, doesn't say beautify, doesn't say any of these things. It simply is it compatible no. with, am I not reading? No. Am I not reading this no, paper? No, am I not reading this correctly? Am I not reading this correctly? This was put out in the front. You can certainly rescue me if I'm wrong. I'm reading right here. Amherst Local Historic District Bylaw Application Review Criteria. So with that understanding, um, I think a great deal of work has gone into making this something that will be compatible. Right now, as I drive through, I think it real, has, really looks rather ugly. Um, if something doesn't come in, if this doesn't happen, if something like a park, something that can beautify, then to me, I think you, it, this is really a loss. Because here is a beautiful, compatible structure that's going to be doing something really important for this town, continue to do something important for this town, being driven off from this area and then left the way it is, that's, that that that's, would be total irresponsibility in my view. So I, I, uh, I do hope that uh, this can, can move forward. I think you've done a great deal of work in aiding uh, uh, in the preservation and protection of, uh, of the distinctive historic district. And I hope you can now move forward to bring this to a conclusion. Thank you. Thank you. Make it brief. I'm attorney Matthew Massey. I represent Harms Way and also uh, live in Amherst. It, I feel for Amherst people. I do. And the way I feel for them is the issue didn't arise tonight. 
this issue arose the day they bought the property. Now, I'm a conveyancer and attorney party is a conveyancer and a land use planner. And if we were ever to represent Amherst Media in the purchase of the property, it would have been stated very clearly that, that we would not purchase the property. Um, there would be contingency that all permitting would be in place. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. And it's very sad because now we're stuck in this position. Some of the board members feel we have to let them build there. However, a property is only as good as if you can obtain the permitting you need. Tonight is one step, the Historic Commission. And after tonight, whatever decisions made, we can come back here. Then they have a whole new set of um, uh, obstacles to go through other planning to the planning board and other boards and permitting. It's a, I just, it's very, I'm sad because I know for a fact that if it was presented to me, this would, it, it, we would still be in the offer, we would be in a purchase and sale agreement waiting for you guys to approve everything so when it was approved, they can purchase the property. At this point, they have a property that is not permittable and you're not required to bail them out on that. Now, if you choose to do that, that's fine, but you're not required to do that and you shouldn't feel that we have to let them do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Was there one other? I think there yeah. was one. Okay. This would be the last. Thank you. So, um, my name is Chris Guidera. Uh, I live at 219 Strong Street. I manage 14 Gray Street. My family owns that as well as 446 Main Street where my brother lives. Um, I have to say, uh, we also own some other buildings um, in different parts <coughs> of the world that are, include some very large, very historic buildings. Um, We've constructed buildings, my house that I live in, we built that and we built it to look like a Hadley barn. So that's how interested we are in that. We have a house in Spain that we built in, uh, up in the mountains, in some rocky mountains, where stone houses was the way they were built. We have a stone house that we built out of stone there. So that's my background as far as my appreciation for historic uh, preservation, or my family's background at least. Now, I have to say that, um, you know, as I'm not going to get into how much I do myself as well appreciate uh, uh, everything that uh, Amherst Media does for the community. But, um, uh, there, you know, the fact that I personally have done many nice things for many nice people in the world is not a, should not be a criteria for uh, me getting a permit to do something here, uh, according to the rules of the... Um, Historic Commission. So I'm basically shooting down effectively what Ms. Shabazz says about um, Dr. all the great Shabazz, things that thank they've you. about all the great things that they've done for for the community, etc. Uh, I think that is not supposed to be a factor. I'm quite convinced of that. I think you also believe that as well. Um, as far as yeah, things like um, what uh, what I've done for uh, for the community, what what background I have and how uh, diverse my family is and, uh, and our businesses are. Um, I may not look it, but I am not what I appear to be. I personally have lived as a minority and as a majority. I have lived poor, I have lived wealthy, I have been at each end of the spectrum, but again. So I have all that background and that understanding. Um, I am not the Caucasian I appear to be at all. but. My point is, I understand all that, and none of that is relevant to this. It is absolutely not relevant, and it's being brought up again and again, and I think that's inappropriate. Um, and that's the only reason I'm bringing that up about myself, is because others have brought that up. Um, you know, I think that the point that was said that something is gonna go there, something has to go there, uh, something will be built there, I don't agree with that. I don't agree that that's a that that's uh, inevitable. Uh, I'm not saying that there shouldn't be, but that I, it, I think the way it was presented can imply that it's inevitable, and therefore let's do the least harm we can to the to the viewscape. Um, I disagree with that point. Uh, one perhaps minor point, but that may affect 
um, some some people's view of of, uh, of uh, as a factor is that bus stop that there's a bus stop there already that maybe that has a slight negative thing to it. Well, there's no bus stop there. The bus stop is actually in front of our building at 446 Main Street, and so there so that's just to be clear that there's no bus stop there. There's no gathering accumulation. There's no uh, that's open. The bus stop is in front of our building at 446 Main Street. Um, so that should not be a factor as well. Now, as far as the uh, purchase of the property, this property was purchased for $340,000 in 2013. My brother Jerry sold it. I can say all I want about how I think that was a mistake of him to sell it. I can say all I want about how I think it was a mistake of, uh, of Amherst Media to purchase it for that price. Um, I can say all I want about how it was a mistake for basically uh, certain people to be hanging out at my brother's house, drinking beer and coming up with a deal with it like this and never looking into the ramifications, nor even looking at the property lines, nor any other things that are so important, the drainage, the, 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 um, all these factors that were completely ignored, as my mother did when she bought 14 Gray Street from my brother Jerry. People did this, and you know what? In certain ways, it was a big mistake. So that, is not, should not be a factor for your decision of how much somebody spent, how much it was worth. You know, and I can tell you, yes, we have a lawsuit going, and Amherst Media, their attorney has, uh, they have presented in Superior Court that this property, legally have presented, that this property is not worth whatever's being said now about 275, 370, 360, whatever. Uh, they did present in Superior Court that this property is not buildable. And they're suing my brother Jerry for the $50,000 that they say they lost uh, because the property is only worth $290, uh, but they paid to $340 for it. That's what they're suing my brother for, selling them that, and that big mistake that all of them made. Okay, so that also should be considered the fact that they can, they should, I mean, should not be, <laughs> should not be considered. Um, as a, well, we spent so much money, we this and that, you know. Okay, I'm going to move on fast because I see. That's the, not really, that's, well, I'll get to that after. Okay. That's not our. All right. Um, so now the model there is off scale, it's completely deceptive. Those pictures, these pictures, I mean, if, if they're supposed to make it look like it's not obtrusive, well, you know what? Look at where this perspective is from. It's effectively from, um, from this, the upper part of the second floor of my building at 446 Main Street. That's what, if you're looking down as a bird's eye view, will make this image of that white building look smaller. That's one. The other is um, that uh, there is an image that comes up here, I don't know if it can be brought up, that shows the perspective. Uh, there's only one pers perspective image here, thank you. Um, all the other ones are side elevations, front elevations, north, east, south, it doesn't matter, cross sections, and all that. But why don't we have an actual perspective view, which is the equivalent of a sort of semi-3D view, that shows it in relationship to the rest? That's what should have been presented a long time ago, because I believe that that would show our, our building blocked at, um, at the, at, it would just show how everything is blocked, if you get that from a different different angles. That's not hard to do. I've done lots of drawings like this. And to, to basically um, piggyback that, this here, this image, I think, says so much. It says blockage, 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 blockage. Block your view, block your view. It's gone. It might not be gone from everywhere for everybody, but that says Everything is blocked. This, whether you could make it small building or not, whether they need 4,500 feet or not, um, I think is beyond the, um, the, the purview of the, of the mandate of the Historic Commission. So just to recap, I think that um, you should not be considering the, the kindness of their hearts. We're not. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Right.
Thank you. Thank you for the comment. Um, there's, I did indicate that I would respond to what you had said because I just need to reiterate that the only thing this commission can look at is the architecture. It is the building itself. Mm -hmm. Nothing else. Mm -hmm. Lawsuits between owners. What the use of the building is. The only thing that we within our mandate to look at is the physical structure. The criteria that we have is that we shall consider the historic and architectural value and significance of the site, the general design, proportions, detailing, mass, arrangement, texture, and material of the exterior architectural features, the relation of the exterior architectural features to other buildings and structures in the surrounding area, the appropriateness of the scale, shape, and proportion of the buildings or structure both in relation to the land area upon which the building and structure is situated and in relation to the building and structures in the vicinity. That, that's it. We do not go beyond that. But each of those are subjective. I mean, this is ultimately, you know, a subjective decision. And we can all, we might all have differing opinions about what we think is attractive and not attractive, contextually appropriate, and isn't. But that is, that, that's our purview. It's not. So it, it's not beyond the architecture. Um, it is really uh, late in the hour. So um, I, I think Nate would have to help me with this. But how we, um, and I, this is just me, but you know, we, we've heard that we, um, we don't have to make any we don't have to approve any structure that's I mean that some of the public comments said that we if we don't think it's enhancing the property uh, or the historic district that we don't need to approve a building but I don't know that that's what I mean that that's what town council would <laughs> advise us I mean because we're also in a position where we are a body of the town. What, what the town council said is the commission can't make like a sweeping declaration that nothing can happen on this property you have to take it application by application. So if this isn't appropriate, it is, okay, well, through the recommendations or the review of this application, is it gonna get something that is more closer to being appropriate? So, you know, we have, so, so, you know, to me what the, count, what the attorney's saying is we haven't explored all options to know what is or isn't appropriate. The commission may think this is appropriate, and if it doesn't, it doesn't, and then the applicant is free to come back with another concept, another design. And so, you know, maybe after so many tries, we can say nothing's appropriate, but we, we haven't reached that point yet. So that's really what the attorney was saying. We're not, um, you know, under obligation to approve this, but um, we're not, and, and, but we're not also under obligation to say nothing can go here, right? We're not. We can't just make a sweeping declaration that this is going to remain an open parkland. We have to, you know, go through the options of what what could happen here before. But um, so, in terms of this process, you know, the commission had some ideas about changing the mass of the western part of the building. You know, the question for me is, would we want to keep the hearing open as a continued hearing? We don't need to continue it for a month. We could have another meeting next week on this. We only need 48 hours to post it, so we could move it along if we wanted to keep it going. Um, you know, so we don't have to, you know, we don't have to push it away in mid November, we can, you know, do something pretty quickly. I mean, I think we'd like to keep it going. Um, I would, um, the last time what we did was we looked at that calendars and we scheduled it. Right, but what are we going to, um, what are we asking for? We, we're asking for. I mean, some of us are saying, well, we'd like to see right. the West Wing um, reduced. reduced. And then, some are saying well, we'd like to see a different concept. There's no concept. point in repeating ourselves. Right. What we so, have to have is we have to have the strength of our convictions here. It's, it's unfortunate for you two who have just arrived, but there's no alternative. We have to stand up and be counted, right? That's our job. We can't avoid doing that. We have to do it. Now, we've had a straw vote, which is, I think, indicated where people's heads are. I think I would like to ask, has anybody changed their mind substantially? after hearing what uh, I, folks I have said. I changed my mind. I, I agree that I cannot vote for that it's appropriate. Okay. I, I feel that I, I have been convinced that 
my feeling is that this is not uh, something that I would like to leave as a legacy. So that makes two of us. Um, do we have, because if there's four of us that do, then our job as a commission. Yeah, you, you, you never voted on this. You're just yeah, kind of yeah, looking yeah. at conversations. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm trying three to three the average. Three and the, it'll probably be three to three right now. Is there any chance of our having a meeting to, to, to process what we've heard from the community? Well, we could continue that to next week. Um, yeah, that's what we need to do that at a public. Yeah. We need to do that at a public. It has a right open meeting, right? So we could. I mean, I wouldn't. I don't know that we can put, ask the architects to come back with a whole new concept in a week. So, nice. Sitting in this, um, so so sitting in this, sitting in this format doesn't lend itself to the kind of conversation yeah. I think we need you know, as a board. Also, as, as you're Our saying, we're so new. Here. I was no. completely yeah. convinced so by I talking know. to Moria before that this has to be, that something has to be built there. That there, you own it, and therefore you have the right to build, and that's that. And now I'm hearing that's not necessarily the case. Oh my god. So, well, no, so I, I think, think what, there yeah. are things that haven't been We're saying that we cannot, we, we can't come into it saying we, we like it the way, the open green space the way it is. It can't. We have to, if they said, right. exhaust all possibilities. Right. Right. If, if we right. oppose this, we have to have sound reasons that are rooted in this. In right. that and right. we have yeah. to be able to articulate that. That's our obligation. Right. Okay. Okay, so let's work to get closer to that. Okay, that makes sense. So we want, I mean, it's seven, almost seven thirty. Could we take time to since you? the engineer is here and I'd like to know about the berm. Could we have a few minutes on the burn I and the engineer? The engineer is here. Um, I think that would be okay. Yeah. yeah. Just so she doesn't want to yeah. wait a week to ask sure. more questions. Yeah. All right. I'll take three minutes. Hey, can we go back to the site plan, please? <coughs> um, this is that good? Yeah, that's fine. A commercial development, right? This is not a residential. Residential, you don't worry about stormwater. This is two lots, right? Here and here, we could have two homes being proposed here, which would also be masses in front of the buildings. In fact, there's a lot of advantage of having a commercial site that has the whole thing because they can keep this a big void space, which wouldn't be the case if this were a residence here and a residence here. There would still be big homes. And uh, we are, with this design, being a commercial site, needing to do various types of stormwater mitigation now that majority of that is deep underground tanks that are over here. Fairly expensive, but we can pull that off. What we can't do <coughs> in this part of the site to move, because we've been asked to move the building down, is soak the water back into the ground. When you add a pervious area, rooftop, parking lot, we have to create a way to get the water back into the ground. So you need, if you are familiar with septic systems, we need some type of drain field, a way to take water and soak it into the ground, and these systems are level because that's how water works. So what we're able to do is collect the water and still not sure yet, but we'll, we'll do it with pumps, bring it uphill, and this way leave this <coughs> as you know, free of structure as possible. However, there are certain rules that the state has. And basically, you, because there is high groundwater, that's a feature of this part of the world. Uh, groundwater is about two feet below existing grade. The bottom of this drain field has to be two feet above the groundwater. So the very bottom of our system cannot be lower than existing grade at the highest point on the hill. And as the hill drops down, our system remains level. So this is what is creating this slope. If the sidewalk and the road were here, we create a little slope. And we're, we're a little fixed by physics, by uh, the requirements necessary to, to build a commercial site. And considering how much um, we're hearing about this slope um, being um, maybe not what you would like to see it. if we keep it low, that's great. I can probably get it down a little bit, cut the corner back a little bit. I think the photo that was presented earlier was from the least advantageous perspective. Uh, the slope, I mean, the sidewalk comes up 
and the height of the mound decreases when you go to the west, so eventually it disappears into the ground. And at one point right here is the strongest, the highest slope and the lowest point of the viewer. So the reality is you actually can see past the slope in this way, you can see past the slope in this way, and if you're not six foot tall like me, then at the worst uh, point, the most disadvantageous location, there, there may be an impingement on, on the viewscape. Um, so I can cut that back a little bit and diminish it, and I can, I mean, we're, we're not into the final engineering design of this, so can I take back six inches, nine inches, 15 inches? I am not sure yet. But you'll try. I will definitely try, and I know I can do at least some better than what's now presented. Um, I didn't realize that the mound was going to be such a big, a big issue. So I can shave it back. And is there something you can do with the sticks that indicate that, so that when I go wandering down there again, I can see how you change things? I can look into that. Part of it is that's this is far down the line in the design. I see. There's a lot of work, on the previous area and grading and final everything. Stormwater is the last thing that happens in in a site design. But, just because everything else has to be set prior yeah, to that. Sure. So I can make guesses. And right now I have a guess that I'm sure will work. And I can make a more refined guess that will probably work. Um, and we could reestablish re a string line or something like that. But, so, anyway, so right now, you know, the site plan is showing one detention area, but is there a way to have you know, a dispersed system with you know, more tanks? It is already a dispersed system. There are at least three tanks in this system, most of which are down here yeah. buried. Um, we can't do any tanks here. This has to be an above ground system that's yeah. just required by law. So that is just basically a drain field up above there. It's basically a drain field, yeah. yes. Yeah. But it has to be above existing grade because of the groundwater. Right. I mean, all the others, all these, all these other houses have the same problems. You've got French drains and cut. They're, they're managing water too. Yes. They're residences, so they're not required to do the detention system. Thank so you. we could replace that field with a house if we're a residence and we wouldn't have to worry about it. But you'd have to get our approval. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> but right at this point, you know, uh, yes, commercial I, I use triggers different I, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank That's you. helpful. Um, so I think that the question is, do we want to continue the discussion? I don't see a way around it. Yeah. And we, um, if the commission is available, we could do it in a week uh, at a date certain. Yeah, um, we do we want, yeah. Yeah. And do we want to ask the architect? Do we want to continue the discussion then and then maybe perhaps make a request to the architect for the Yeah, yeah, yeah I don't think we should, should do it now. Thing. Yeah, I, I would agree. Let us yeah. not make a request to the architect. We just want to continue oh, the yeah, discussion. Yeah, yeah. I, I do have a question, though, because yeah. one of the architect, or maybe two, I don't know. One of the architects here, you. Is it possible to do line drawings of ideas without committing yourself to the whole nine yards? So um, there isn't a huge commitment well, to visual yeah. ideas, but you give us something to work with for that work. Again, we don't want to mislead you with a line drawing that doesn't necessarily work. So the thought that's put into it is, what if we do this this way? And then we could show them as a line drawing. But the, the first reality is kind of making, looking again back at the program and the plans yeah. and everything else and seeing where those lines are going to be. <laughs> so, yeah, that's, that's a short answer. I mean, when we go to the Museum of Modern Art, we can see these great line drawings by Corbusier and yeah. Mies van der Rohe, which are just simple one and two lines. Yeah. Yeah. We don't know if those were ever built. They were done after the work was completed. After the work was completed. So, you know, I, I understand what you're asking. Yes. Yeah. And it would be wonderful if it was easier to do it than not. But, um, you know, just sure the difficulty that we had amongst ourselves in trying to visualize or imagine the alternatives. Sure. Sure. And, and that. Would be, it would be great if you could help us. Sure. Those okay. uh, poles they had out that we were able to do, those white, uh, mm -hmm. they were, I think, very helpful. Mm -hmm. I mean, they, they're, they're accurate to John's point. Okay. He doesn't want to mislead. 
um, because the problem of presenting drawings to a public group like this it becomes a matter of public record. And uh, then uh, you can be grilled with it uh, any time, and even in a legal, you know, in, in the court of law. So he has to be careful. That uh, process that you uh, supervised last week was very helpful in that regard. Is that, is, is, is that yeah. not helpful? Fine. Uh, Fine. Yeah, yeah. No, the no, simplest that's... thing is the back of the napkin sketch. Right? I mean, yeah. That's really easy. To, well, that's and a good. lot of wonderful ideas come up from that. But practical, the practicality of it isn't necessarily going to work with the solution. That's, but um, maybe it's hard to envision, but. Um, but we're required to. Right. We are required yep. by yeah. law and our role to envision right. what's going to go there right. before it goes there. Right. We can't That's be our by only them. role. Right. Even when we get pretty exacting, it's question. So I don't know how much you're going to gather from a line sketch okay. Okay. Of, of, That's fine. of what the final solution okay. might be. So um, today's Tuesday. Can we meet a week from Tuesday? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think not. Right. Not for as long. Um, yeah. Um, that would be. Uh, My birthday. But that's okay. The 22nd of you. Oh, the 22nd. Am I 100 years old? Oh. Yeah. 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 We can do the 21st or 22nd. No, 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 no. We'll right. do the 22nd. That's fine. Are you sure we can? Yeah. Does that work for everybody? If it works for okay. everybody else, it definitely works. Um, would it be here? Um, You'll have to check. Yeah, we can do four. Um, you know, we can do it at start at 4 p.m. Okay. Does that work? 4 p.m. Same no, time, same place. Yeah. Be easier. All right. We'll, we can say same time, uh, place. If it changes, I'll let you know. Okay. And it will be posted yep. at 4 o'clock. Uh, 4 o'clock. <laughs> what date is that? The 22nd. And this would be the only item on the agenda. Okay. So, so it can be at 5. So it can be here at 4. The 22nd? Yep. So, yes. So it will actually appear as an item on the agenda, not like because we weren't on the agenda. Well, oh, you were. A, yeah. So there's a public hearing notice, and then as a continued public hearing, you just, there's an agenda then posted um, prior to 48 hours. So this would just be one agenda, you know. Okay. Just the I one just want to agenda know if our name will here. appear. That's yeah, no, it was here. It said, um, you know, continued public okay. hearing. So there's a public hearing notice, and then a, an agenda for the meeting. And this one is just going to be an agenda. So then we, do we don't officially close this meeting. We we say the hearings continue to. to October 22nd at 4 p.m.